The presentation of the colors is brought to you by the United States Coast Guard. Chief's mess, attend, hut! Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight? Its last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting. still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave oh the land of the free and the home of the brave McGill Tulin wrap it up there season tonight as they're not going to go on to the playoffs. Sarah Land will. McGill Tulin playing much better. Coming off a big win over Blunt last week. Sarah Land, tough loss to Theodore, but they're going to get ready to take on Wetumpka next week. We'll wrap up our season in 6A Region 1 tonight. Sarah Land and McGill on Friday Night Rivals. Dr. Pepper, Friday Night Rivals, presented by Sonic. Coach Norman Joseph and the McGill Tulin Yellow Jackets going to wrap up their season tonight here while Sarah Land gets ready to go on to the postseason. They're ranked number four, coming off their only loss of the season last week against the now top-ranked Theodore Bobcats, which was a great battle last week. But tonight they wrap up region play, and we wrap up our broadcast season tonight here from Spartan Stadium. Good evening. I'm Jim Cox. My partners Dan Brennan and Heather Healy down on the field. We'll check in with her in just a few minutes. But uh, a matchup here tonight, Dan, you see a, a Sarah Land team coming off that tough loss last week, but a McGill team really trending up here in the second half of the season. Yeah, they, they've had, played very well in the second half of the season. They're coming off a nice win against Blunt, yep. too, where they routed the Leopard. So McGill, a younger team, rounding into form, not going to the playoffs. Sarah Land, again, bouncing back to an emotional loss, mm -hmm. but I think the players are fine. I think so. This McGill team, you know, asked Jeff Kelly before the game uh, just a few minutes ago, you know, what concerns it? He talked about that defense, and boy, we know it because we saw it a few weeks ago against Spanish Ford, and there was a player who caught our eye in that game. Kind of catches everybody's eye. He does. Number 20, Dylan Sauce. He's a great name, by the way, and he's also a great football player. He'll play in the interior line, but he makes plays behind the line, sideline to sideline. So much effort. Dylan Sauce is a really fun player to watch. You can't miss him tonight. Yeah, he is uh, everywhere and really is one of the leaders of this McGill team playing his last high school football game here tonight. On the other side, a young man who's got a lot of football in front of him. We saw him start the season as a sophomore quarterback, K.J. Lacey. He is a special one for Sarah Land. He's got special people around him, too, but Lacey only a sophomore. A lot of poise. A lot of talent. He can tuck it and run if you if he has to, but he's more of a guy that keeps his eyes downfield. He can make a play that's scripted. He can make a play on the run. KJ Lacey, big time weapon. Everybody in the state knows about him. Yeah, 27 touchdowns against just three interceptions on the season. We'll see how this one shakes out here tonight in Sarah Land. We wrap things up for our broadcast season and also for our uh, region play here in 6A Region 1 as we get ready to kick this one off. But first, this message from the City of Mobile and their Kindness Counts campaign. Just about ready to get this one started here in Sarah Land. Jim Cox and Dan Brennan as we McGill won the toss and they will defer. So we will see Sarah Land, that high powered offense led by KJ Lacey that Dan talked about just moments ago. They will take the field first here as we get ready to wrap up our Friday night's rival, Friday night rival schedule for 
this 2022 campaign. And before we get tonight's kickoff, let's send it down to Heather Healy down on the sidelines. Hey, Heather. Hey, guys. Great to be with you tonight. Both teams, they obviously want to finish this seed regular season on a high, right? And for Spanish sport, this team is not looking forward to playoffs just yet. they got to secure this game first. They know how aggressive this McGill Tulin team can be, specifically on defense, so their offense has got to play tight and secure. For McGill Tulin, this is the last game they're going to play all season long. Head coach Norman Joseph, he won wants to finish this season on a very positive note. He likes the culture that he is building here at McGill Tulin. Both of these teams, all of their eyes, their hearts, and their minds are on this game tonight to finish this season outright, guys. If Kelly, you saw, thank you, Heather, just a few seconds ago, of course, has taken the Sarah Land program to the state championship twice, lost to Pinson Valley in 2018, and then back in 2014, lost to Clay Chalkville, and you got to think, folks here in Sarah Land think there's another chance here in the near future for this Spartan team to make it back up to the Super 7. Well, and, and you know what? With the, the fact is with Lacey and McWilliams and uh, also Ryan Williams, Ryan Williams, they could have multiple shots up there. Yeah. I don't say take your time and get it done later, but yeah, the future, the near future looks very bright. Norman Joseph, Joseph in a second year here at McGill really likes the way this program's trending up. Jeff Kelly was telling us on the field, he said, well, you know, you saw McGill struggling earlier this year, and then they reached about the halfway point of the season. He said they have really started to play great football. They're going to just miss out by the playoffs by a game. Yeah. And that, I'm sure they look back at that St. Paul's game in week two uh, that they had all the turnovers and only put three points on the board that really – was one that kept him out of the playoffs. Yeah, they, they had to settle on a quarterback. And yep. we saw Andrew Murchison the week where he took the job. Yep. And it was against Spanish Ford on the road. Kid got whacked a few times, kept getting up, kept bringing his team back. Uh, he's kept the job since then. He's a good quarterback. He's a good prospect. Henry Green, yeah, he played played really well in that game. Then he played really well in the, the first half against Theodore and then Theodore's defense, which might be the best in the state in 6A. Kind of got after McGill in the second half, but then he played really well in that big win you mentioned over Blunt yeah. last week. So yep. Green will kick off. Ryan Williams, the Alabama commit, and McGill says, uh, nope, we do not want to put it anywhere near their hands. And this one loose on the ground. So just kind of a high kick. Theodore on the first kick. Last week, got the ball against Sarah Land. Looked like it was going to bounce out of bounds, stayed in bounds, and kind of set the tone early in that one with Theodore. That big win. But here we see KJ Lacey. Sophomore quarterback. 27 touchdowns, just three interceptions. Hey, that's amazing. On the year, 1,825 yards. And incomplete on first down. Take a look at this starting lineup for Sarah Land. Dan mentioned Sante McWilliams, just a sophomore. KJ Lacey, a sophomore. And then, of course, you got Ryan Williams on the outside, a sophomore as well. Committed to Alabama, number one. Yep. Green, Crenshaw, Chestang, Sexton, Wilson up front. And the give to McWilliams, and he'll get up to about the 37, bringing up third down here for Sarah Land. McGill defense giving up 20 points a game. Wilson, Dylan Sauce, we're going to come a lot tonight. Farrell also really well with 70, uh, with 10 tackles for losses on the outside. Good, good player. Hadagi, Zeniga, and Kina, the linebackers. This one diving catch at the 48. Jordan Dees. Jordan Dees. Jim, this is a great throw on the run. Third down, so consider consider the stakes. Really good throw on the run and a really good catch. That's Jordan Dees with his 16th catch of the season. Back to McWilliams. I'll and tell you, this uh, McGill team's a swarming defense, Jim. Good thing. Because McWilliams is a runner that doesn't have much quit in him. He's the sophomore that's already been offered by a lot of big schools. 
Really solid. But doesn't these sophomores simply don't play like sophomores? They've really leaned on the running game more as the season has gone on. Mm -hmm. uh, with that guy, it's a sure thing. Second and seven here. Lacey zips this one to the near side, and there's the Alabama commit up to the 40. His 49th catch of the season. One thing I noticed on that was how quickly Lacey got it out. You get the ball out quicker. The receiver's got more options immediately. You don't want to give him any options. It was a great tackle in the open field. Otherwise, he's just going to create problems and maybe get six. He's that good. And the longer you hold it with the pressure McGill likes to bring, right. more chances for you're, trouble there. You're going to have some visitors in the, in the uh, backfield. Third and two. Back to McGill McWilliams on the right side, and he's got the first down and more inside the 30, all the way down to the 19-yard line as he'll pick up 21. And they are into the Dr. Pepper Maroon zone with another USA Health first down here for the Spartans. They told McGill where they were going to run it. H back over there on the right side. They just run power, and they got enough blockers to make a lane, and McWilliams doesn't need much. He usually creates his own lane. You give him space, look out. Alex Schamberger wrote him down there at the 19. Same play on the right side and nearly the same result. He'll pick up 10, and it's first and goal. Another USA Health first down. Talk about them leaning on the run. Why wouldn't they? Look at the blocking on the right side, blocking everywhere. Cross. Quarter comes up, makes a nice stop. That was Baxter Turner, the pregame show guest, the tight end, leading the block there. Yep. For the Spartans at first and goal. That's his job, and he's happy to do it. Right side again. Mick Williams gets tripped up at the two. Looked like he was going in there and got tripped up, bring up second and goal. You have to think if you're if you're this Saraland team. Got your first round playoff game next week. He'd love to jump out here, get a lead, get some of your stars, maybe sit down and Give rest. A little rest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, think about big goals you have coming up the rest of the season. Second and goal. McWilliams hit and driven back. Wow. Looked like there was a hole there momentarily, but then it quickly closed up as Keena, the senior linebacker came in and made the stop that's going to be his 14th tackle for a loss yeah. on the season and good. he closed that hole quickly he closed it and he got in the backfield 200 pounds senior good size linebacker 22 interesting it seemed like a sure thing with Sarah Lance momentum they were going to get six not such a certainty now third and goal Lacey zips it out. Wow. And, wow. Williams fell down right as he made the catch pass, maybe a little bit behind him. I'll tell you what, again, McGill, they, they, they bring a lot of tacklers, and you got to with this guy. Interesting, they had everything set up on the, uh, they had power to the boundary side, Jim, and we're just going to try to isolate him. They thought that'd be enough, but McGill brought people. They, they also had they, coverage they, out there. When they had coverage. Schamberger was there. So Hunter Kirkland on. to try the short 27-yard field goal. And Saraland gets three on their opening drive, but McGill's got to feel good about that stop. Inside the two there, Saraland takes the opening kickoff. They get three out of it, and they're in the lead here on Friday Night Rivals. Saraland on top by a score of 3-0 as they took that opening drive down and had to settle for a field goal, but they take off almost five minutes on the clock. And you said that a big third down conversion, right, Dan? Big third down conversion. Great run on uh, throw on the run by Lacey and a great catch. And, and, and then it was McWilliams. Six rushes, 46 yards, kind of stumbled going in or he probably had a touchdown. Yeah, first down and first and goal there. It looked like he was going in and tripped to the two. And then McGill's defense bows up on second and third to hold him to three. They certainly did. Kirkland will kick off. Schamberger, Roscoe Haywood, and Anthony Eager will be back for the Yellow Jackets. This one knuckles and will be taken 
at the 10. That was off the hands of Eager, and so not a great start for McGill as he'll be pinned back inside the 15. Eager sure-handed usually. Yeah, yeah, going to South Alabama. Really good wide receiver, real good track speed. But this one will start at the 13. We like this kid, Jim. Boy, really, and you get his, he's just a sophomore as well. You see, he's got the size, 6'3". He's going to fill out. Yep. He can take a shot. He's got moxie. He's got talent. He's thrown for almost 1,200 yards this year, 12 touchdowns, seven interceptions. Inge lined up behind him, and they'll give it to him. And not much off the left side. There is he'll get two up to the 15. Murchison, the quarterback, Inge in the backfield. Eager is who they like to go to. But Haywood on the other side also has 42 catches. Miles and Mayhall is the wide receiver. Shine, Tran, Diamond, Holmes, and... Brock on the offensive line. Murchison goes right back off to Inge and nothing doing that time is Jermaine Paramore has his 12th tackle for a loss on the season. Yeah, you, you look at this, they just run a stretch play right there. A lot of size on that defensive line. Coleman, Paramore, and Bird. Bowie, Thompson, York, and Curtis on the linebackers. White might see Moffitt back there as well. Gully, Lafitte, and Crenshaw in the secondary. And now McGill at third. And 10 coming up here deep in their own end. Murchison looking to the right side. Fires it up. Wanted Shamberg instead. It's picked off. Picked off on the far side by Gully. And it's a pick six for the Spartans. No, they're going to mark him out at the four. Thought he got in. They're going to say he stepped out at the four. But that one kind of hung up in the air. And Dalvin Gully comes up with the interception, the junior. And now it's first and goal, Sarah Lamb. Yeah, all these uh, Sarah Lamb defensive backs are first-year starters in the positions where they're playing. A little greedy right here going all the way across the field. That's just a hard throw for kinda, anybody. Yeah, hung up there a bit as yep. well. And now, Sarah Land with a chance with great field position. Watch McGill, watch him try to shoot some gaps here, Jim. Get penetration. Looking for the one on one to the near side and for the touchdown, Ryan Williams, number 17. Oh, now they're going to say no. Wow. that's Okay, so I've given Sarah Land two touchdowns. I've been wrong, you know, twice, but I thought. I thought he had it. Down here to our near corner. Nope. Wow. Great look uh, by our crew here. Is it just, you know, he can contour his body in the air like that. So it's, 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 it's a good idea to throw it his way. That's a rare drop. Second and goal. McWilliams is going to be stopped again by this McGill defense as Schamberger was one of the first ones in there along with, hey, guess who, Dylan Sauce. Yeah, Dylan Sauce, great player. They bring people from everywhere, and, and they've only got three yards or four yards to defend, Jim. They're not going to make it easy on you. They're tough bunch, and uh, they, they're, they're going to try to get a win here, get it, make a Sarah Lane kick another field goal if they can. Uh, I would say a wide receiver may be involved in this play. 15th tackle for a loss on the season for Dylan Sauce for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah. His 72nd tackle overall, and now third and goal. Lacey on the sprint out. Look at that. Pressure coming, trying to turn the corner. Looking, now a flag's going to come in. That's going to end up being a holding call. It's incomplete. So now if you're McGill, do you, do you back him up? Give him another chance. Try to make the field goal longer if you can stop him. I think it is because of you where that flag is all the way back at the 18. During the play, holding on the offensive team. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Okay. So you hold. I think there was a decision to be made there, right? Yeah, yeah, Legit. Otherwise, it would be fourth and goal. It would have been way back. Then it would have set up a long field goal if they didn't get it. But you're saying, hey, if we if we can hold them to 
three here. That's a win. It'll be the second to goal situation that would be stopped a tough angle on a short kick. This one just from 22 yards. But Hunter Kirkland is now four of five on the year. And Saraland has the lead by a score of 6-0 here on our final night of Friday Night Rivals. You know what I could have used at the beginning of this broadcast suddenly, Dan? I had a little bit of a dry throat there. Yeah. You know what I could have used? Oh, Dr. Pepper. That would have been a big help. You know, if you go to Dr. Pepper, go online, you can pick up some Pepper perks as well. Uh, just uh, sign up to earn those free, cool Dr. Pepper perks uh, and also have a chance to win college football national playoff championship game tickets. Go to drpepper.com and sign up. And good luck. Who's got a chance to win it back-to-back -back this year? I guess could Georgia. Be. Yeah, only one that could, right? I guess. This one again bounces to the near side, and McGill had called for a fair catch, and then the ball bounced, and McGill again with a bit of a snafu here on the yeah, kickoff. I, They'll be back again. They started the last drive of the 13, and they're going to be at the 12 yeah, this time. They need a play to get them out of here, get them out of jail so their offense can begin to operate a little bit. Yeah, they went just they, kind of unfortunate, you know? Let's go down to the sidelines, check in with Heather again. Heather. Yeah, guys, when Sarah Lynn got that interception, you could see the wind kind of knocked out of McGill tool and sideline. Head coach Norman Joseph, though, turned around and he said, hey, pick your head up, get everything pumped up and going. We've got three and a half quarters left to play and they just held him to a field goal. So nothing to hang their head down yet, guys. He really likes the way Murchis has been playing here the last three or four weeks. Looking to throw this time. He's able to get this one on a rope to Eager and Eager all the way out across the 40. Looking near midfield and he's got the speed. Eager up the sidelines all the way to the 30 yard line. Yeah, did I mention the kids got track speed? There was the track speed on display. You've got Ryan Williams. We've got Anthony Eager. He's pretty darn good too. Makes a couple of moves in the middle of the field. Another one right there. 59 yards on the pickup, and McGill is on the move at the 29. That's getting out of jail right there. Oh, boy. How about a confidence builder after that bad interception? Yep. Last time he put it in the air. A lot of Sarah Land guys up on the line of scrimmage. Look out. Back to Inge, and nothing doing there as Cameron York, the junior, came through the hole and stopped Trey Inge. They, they, they were begging McGill to throw the football there, Jim. They were really, really up on the line of scrimmage. They've got a lot of beef on the defensive line in the first place. You bring some numbers. It's going to be really tough. Inge is a good, tough runner, but that was asking a lot. Inge over 800 yards on the season. No yeah. gain on that one. Good player. How much hey, we like that guy? Love him a lot. And here you got you spread him out a little bit. I think you got a better chance. Play clock inside five. Murchison barely gets it off. Looking right, fires it off, able to get it to his intended receiver, but in and through the hands of Roscoe Haywood. And now yeah. third and ten coming up. Yeah, tough. He put it put the ball right there. They're gonna get a quick five yards. Yep. Give themselves a makeable third down. Hayward doesn't see it in. And uh now, you know, third and long yeah. against this defense, not easy. Yeah, those are stats you see sometimes that it's just uh, receivers got to help their quarterbacks uh, absolutely. out. You know, absolutely. Uh, you, you probably, from what we saw pregame, you might be in field goal range right yeah. here. Yeah. No, and, I mean, so, Green was booming him from 50 into the wind. Yeah. So let's uh, see if they can keep the quarterback upright here. Sprint. Out and they want to set up a screen, crossing it back, able to get it off to Hayward. He's got the first down this time, still on his feet inside the 15. So they go right back to Hayward. And yeah. they convert and they pick up the third down, and they're in the Dr. Pepper Maroon zone. A little muff on the kickoff, a little drop on the drive, but in Hayward we trust. <laughs> third down, middle, right there in the middle of the zone screen. I like that play that sent Inge yeah. out to take all the yep. attention that way. Exactly. And Hayward does a nice job. He knows what to do with it when he's got it. Cuts it up. McGill's got a first, first and uh, almost goal. At the 13. Inge 
Ken tries to go on that left side. And again, Chris Thompson, junior linebacker in there to make the stop. The 14 senior football players were honored pregame and during the senior night. It was really impressive as these, these kids had declared. Honored all the seniors. All the seniors and declared what they were going to do. So many of them, I mean, just a major uh, percentage of them going on to college. Yep. Really impressive. Uh, this Sarah Land school system is, uh, has got it going on. Second and 10, Murchison. Play action, fires it. That one tipped. Tried to go across the middle and getting a hand on that was Delvin Gully, who's already got the pick tonight. I think the fact that Murchison has got a really good arm, probably that's why the ball wasn't caught, but it was a little high. Good play by Gully. Murchison, if not for Gully, he might have fit that in for a touchdown. He's got a whip. Sure does. Third and 10 from the 13. Sarah Land with the two field goals. McGill's defense held them to on two different drives inside the five. Pressure. Murchison again fakes, comes over the middle, and that one broke it up. There on the coverage was Cameron Lafitte. As they tried to go back to Eager. And now Norman Joseph on fourth and ten. Talked about the big leg you have of Green, but this one a relatively short field goal, field goal attempt coming up for Henry Green. Really good play by Lafitte. If uh, Murchison's able to get it out a little bit more, lead him a little bit more, maybe he's not able to make that play. But uh, let's see if McGill can get three and tighten this thing up a little bit. Yeah, this will be a 30-yard attempt. And it's good. So three field goals here. In the first nine and a half minutes, Sarah Land on top 6-3 here late in the first on Friday Night Rivals. Three field goals to start this one here tonight at Spartan Stadium. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, Heather Healy down on the sidelines as you are just saying there, boy, if you're McGill, you'd love to come away with a touchdown and PAT take the lead. Yeah. But at least you get something on that drive after a yeah, horrendous start you had, on your first one. Exactly. You had to get something. And now they just need a good defensive stand. Let's see if they can if they can get one of those. Green sends this one back. And Williams across the 40. Boy, he's so dangerous. Across the 50. Still on his feet. Still up to the 30. And great field position coming here for Sarah Land. Well, you know, you look like everybody who's in their gap just like... Williams runs through gaps, around gaps, and faster than your defense. Take a look here. Yeah, they keep it inside, but he just makes moves, and he's able to elude Hayward right there. 50 yards on the return. A Boy. sophomore. Yeah. Going to Alabama. I wonder why. Right now. Right? I think I think when he gets there, he's going to play football. <laughs> and he, uh, he might have to wait long. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, they're, they're going to have about five of him in their class, so... A lot of competition up there. K.J. Lacey, sophomore back. And the quarterback gives it off. And McWilliams, and again, good penetration by this McGill defense. Stout up front. Have the Yellow Jackets been? Sauce was coming in there toward the end of that play. He's a special sauce, isn't he? Yep. Keena, the first one there to make the stop. From the 29, a hard count by Lacey. And draws two Yellow Jacket defenders, says Tim Porter. Before the snap, encroachment on the defense. It's a five-yard penalty for remain. Second down. Yeah. Cadence can be such a weapon. Yeah, just free yards. And this defense is so... Uh, reactionary. You yep. know, they want to come get you. Uh, they go quick. McWilliams going to be close to the sticks before Schamberger forces him out there. No, really, it's a pleasure to, on Wednesday nights when we do the pregame show, get a chance to talk to the coaches who we already know pretty well, but often the players we don't. And uh, just a, a great pleasure to, to, to meet those kids, talk about what their aspirations are. 
and had another great pregame show with the tight end for us, uh, Sarah Land and the uh, defensive back for for uh, yeah Baxter Turner and of course Schamberger for McGill. Yep, USA Health first down puts the Spartans in the Dr Pepper maroon zone. Lacey with time now pressure on the backside hangs on flips it touchdown Sarah Land. Brooks Womble with his third touchdown of the year and the poise by Lacey. One of those off scripted plays. Off scripted plays. He's, you know, not a problem for him. He's just in the schoolyard. Go over by the monkey bars. I'll hit you. I think initially they were looking right, and that might have been Williams. And then some pressure by McGill. No, no surprise there. Sauce is coming from behind, but look at the play just. You know, I mean, not everybody can make that play. And just so, so rare when you see a young quarterback who, when he starts to scramble, keeps his eyes downfield. Somebody Absolutely. have to immediately tuck and no, run because no. they're the best athlete in the field at that point. All composure. Yep. And, and then arm talent, of course, thrown from, you know, as they say now, a bunch of platforms or levels. He can do it. So... All the local games going on. Foley a big win last night. Mountain Brook beat up on Baker pretty good. Some 7A games. How about Jackson? Their first ever win over a 7A opponent beat Davidson last night. Gulf Shores got all over BC. Rain, Orange Beach, and Fruitdale got after it last night as well. Fairhope taking on Briarwood Christian, Hillcrest Evergreen, and Daphne tonight. Have, have you noticed all the points Gulf Shores is uh, scoring here at the from the midpoint of the season on? Yep, they have put up a We saw them do it against the Great Williams. We, we, saw, we saw why. Bryant taking on Northridge tonight. Baldwin County and Robertsdale, Murphy and Blunt, St. Paul's and Theodore. And UMS Wright and Williamson tonight to the near side. Eager, big tackle as he got up to the 25-yard line. Was quickly wrapped up on that one with good special teams coverage. I think Crenshaw was the first one there for Sarah Land. I hate to see short field for yep. the Sarah Land offense on the last one after the 50-yard return by yep. Williams. McGill has the ball, first and 10. Yeah, now McGill the line. with their best starting field position of the three drives so far out of the 26. Yeah, this has been it, and uh, it's been these kind of pooch kicks down around the 20-yard line that have kind of befuddled them a little bit. Murchison had the big 59-yard completion on the last drive to Eager. Crenshaw will match up. Against Eager on the bottom of the screen. Now Murchison wants to keep it himself, and Crenshaw comes in. It's going to tackle him for a loss. Yeah, they're just trying to trick you right there. Murchison doesn't have the speed really to to do much to get the corner. The only way he's going to get the corner is if you're completely fooled, and then they're not. Watch right here. Here comes yep. Crenshaw. Quickly Crenshaw peeled off, covering Eager and loss of four. We'll call it three officially in second and 13 according to the scoreboard here and Murchison to inch with a nice hole now he's gonna actually keep it and flip it out of the backfield nice play there by Murchison he's gonna get maybe five back on that one got it off to will miles the junior really sold the fake well it's going to bring up third and long. Miles, big kid. Yep. Jamison Curtis with the tackle. I think it's back to the original line of scrimmage, but not much more here. I think it's James Mayhall. One of those tight ends. Empty the backfield out. Murchison looking over the middle pressure coming. He's wrapped up and brought down. Jimmy Bird with his could be credit now for two and a half sacks on the season. Murchison looking downfield, didn't feel the pressure coming, and Bird gets one on senior night. I know a little bit more about Jimmy Bird than I did when I pulled up to my parking space because they told us all about him uh, as he came out for senior night, but he does wish to play football at the next level. He gets the sack and it closes out the first quarter. Punt coming up for McGill. Sarah Lynn on top, 13-3 after one. Sonic Grilled Cheese Double Burger. 
great. When you get it on the app, it's a really good deal, too. Layered between two 100% seasoned beef patties. Good stuff. Texas Toast. Oh. Use the app for a limited time only at Sonic. Henry Green to punt to Williams. Williams will drift back and take it at the 38. Turns it up the near side with a speed. Look at him go. Still on his feet and hit from behind, but up to the 26-yard line. What a return again by Ryan Williams. And back down to the sidelines to Heather we go. Well, all season long, we have had some different themes here for each of the home team sideline, right? Or each of the home team crowd. And this week, it's going to be construction. Hey, everybody. And I asked a group of seniors, why construction? What does that theme represent? And they said, I don't know. We just like the hard hats. Do you guys want one? <laughs> yeah, senior night for Dan and I, they were like, construction? Yeah, that's what you two knuckleheads need to go do after after you graduate. If you graduate. Yeah, no go kidding. Go construction, right? That, that was the gift just that they let me up on stage grabbing a diploma. 34 yards of return. Look at the arm angle out of the backfield from Lacey to McWilliams. And McWilliams, boy, you see that launch angle gets gets you know changed so much in the arm angle yeah. there. And you saw it on the Roof Doctor's first down from K.J. Lacey. Yeah. Watch him drop down. More than three quarters to get it around the defender. This used to make coaches cringe. Now they're okay with it. Look at that. And accurate. Yeah. Threw it around Mike Farrell. Look at the way McWilliams finishes a play, Jim. Very physical. Not that big, but very physical. Put it at the 13 and before the snap. McGill's going to come across too early again. Before the snap. Encroachment on get, the defense. Really used to knock this ball through. This one feels like it could it could get out of hand. Well, and it's, look at the field position they're getting because of one guy. Yep. And that's the guy that's headed to Alabama. And you see clearly why Alabama's really interested in Williams. I think everybody is. And if you're not, we would ask why. <laughs> you don't know much about football. Wow, 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 wow. Got him to jump again? Yeah, Coach Norman Joseph had really animated over there on the far side and Tim Porter this one might actually go against Sarah Land for the snap ball start on the offense the five yard penalty will remain first down at home. so we're back to where we were and uh, Tim Porter yeah Tim Porter is a young lady that watches every Friday and loves this more than anything uh, watches the, these games and her name is Christy Lee. Hey, Christy. She's down in Tillman's Corner watching awesome. right now. And uh, appreciate you watching. Yeah, Porter. Each and every was, Friday. He asked if we could uh, shout out to her and if she's a avid viewer, of course. Not just the games he works. <laughs> well, to the corner and dropped. Is that one a little low to Williams? Pass is incomplete. It's in a Boy, at, at this level, everything is so easy to him, right? But his, his, so elusive. And then. Some can be elusive, but the Jets he has when he says, I'm going now, it's really, really game-breaking. Second. If this is your first ten. chance of seeing him, this will not be your last. Yeah, he's and he's just a sophomore, so you need two more years to watch him here at Sarah Land. Pitch to the near side. McWilliams trying to get to the corner. And it gets to about the three. Uh, but I thought, thought I saw a flag come in there, and we did. Actually, I think it, you know, all those blockers out front, you might have had somebody grabbing on the edge, and it's on the edge when you can clearly see it. So let's see if that's what we're going to do here. Watch it comes in from yeah. the side judge here. You, you got all this traffic. It's simply a handoff to McWilliams. Is anybody being held inside? Maybe, maybe right maybe, there. Maybe, maybe at the maybe very at, end. Yeah, maybe on Williams. That looked like where the flag came. Your John, in the play, holding on the offense. The ten-yard penalty from the spot. We'll replay. Second down. Gives him a little more room to work with. Is all it does for Sarah Land. <laughs> Second. We had your checkbook. John Peters. Thank you. And about eleven. Back at the sixteen. Lacey now comes back to the near side off to Turner, and Turner rumbles to about the 12. You know, you, you have to applaud McGill right there. 
They go to the guy you don't think they're going to because everybody's concentrated on Williams. Throw it back to Turner. And, Turner and, and they're hoping, you know, kind of a misdirection, Jim, but McGill was home. Yeah, Turner doesn't catch a lot of balls, really a blocking tight end. But on senior night, Coach Kelly says, we'll give you a little. Give him one. Give him one here so you can get in. Legit play to, you know, to throw, throw McGill off, to throw their eyes off. Uh, I mean, McGill's defense has been good down here in the red zone. They've been good the, for the, everybody but Williams and Mick Williams. Lacey, pressure coming. Now Lacey going to take off now. He wants to fire it. And that one got tipped at the line of scrimmage and McGill's defense looks like he's going to come up with another stand here. Let's watch Chase coming from Hattigy yep. and It was absolutely tipped, Jim. Yep. Sorry, I missed you. Tipped at somebody at the second level. I believe a linebacker. So Kirkland already with two field goals tonight. This one will be from 29. Not as much of a sure thing. Good job by McGill again. Of course, the holding penalty really hurt. And the kick is good. And now 16-3 on three field goals tonight for the Sparks. You player game nominee. Nine points already. 16-3 here in the second. So McGill, they didn't get a turnover down there, but they held him to a third field goal. And five plays, just 16 yards after the big return from Ryan Williams. And Kirkland with his third field goal of the night has Saron on top by a score of 16-3. Kirkland now five of six on the year. You got to brag on this facility. Huh? What a place to do a football game from. Plus you have a a really good football team up here in Sierra Land. Yeah, the um, team about that in a second. To the near side and now some room across the 40 across the 50 goes eager and he's up to the 42 yard line and great field position now for the first time tonight for McGill. Either team offensively or special teams wise give it to number one. Yeah, no doubt. Eager took that one at the 21. And they'll knock him out of bounds at the 42. He's got a suddenness to him too, right? Yeah. You're talking about this facility, the um, Yankees being knocked out, of course, the World Series, sending representatives in next week to look at the Jumbotron here because they want one similar in the Bronx next year is the rumor. I tell you what, I well, well, I'll talk about my parking lot experience here in just a Boy, minute. We could tell a lot of parking lot stories about <laughs> yeah. Dan Brennan in, over no, the years. No, we, we can't tell them on the air. <laughs> Inge plugs ahead for a handful. As soon as you get here... I was able to pull in and get a spot right there so I can get out. I've got to walk, but I can get out there easier. And I'm thinking, it's a long walk to the stadium. And it kind of is. And yet, the, the scoreboard was totally visible. And Jeff Kelly told me, yeah, we cut down some trees so you could see it from. Uh, uh, it's a great walk in uh, yeah. over the bridge yeah. uh, here. And there's, there's a good look at the scoreboard taking our feed here tonight on second and five for the Jackets. Murchison fires. Tried to go back to Roscoe Haywood again. Well, I was going to say well covered, but the, according to maybe the referees, well. yeah, maybe so. Maybe a grab right there at the end. Yeah, White was on the coverage. Maybe, maybe defensive hold, maybe before he threw it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. But that's good for a first down. During okay, the Ruth play, Doctor's first down. Holding on the defense. Right, right Tim It's a 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. The yardage will result in a first down. 10 yards in high school, five on Sundays. There you go. And McGill Tulin on the move here inside the 30. Inge trying to bounce it to the outside. He'll get 
four on that one in the 25. They don't give you much. The nope. Sarah Lynn defense is big and active, and they're getting better as the uh, year goes on, along. Paramore right there. I think you've got some schools looking at him and Coleman. Paramore goes 6'3", 270, and he's just a, a junior. And Coleman, his line mate there, the sophomore, with 15 and a half tackles for loss on the season. Inge bangs again, and that time it was Coleman, the sophomore there, to make the stop in third down. Coming up, and you got to think if you're McGill, you're thinking here, uh, all right, we, we field goals, at some point we're going to run out of just trying to hang yeah. around this game in, in field goals. No doubt. I mean, McGill will fight you getting off the bus, yeah. you know. There's not going to be a problem with effort right here, but this Sarah Land defense, they are Stacked yep. along yep. the front line and linebackers for sure. And the, the defensive backs, although being how, young this year, played well. How about teams are uh, only operating a 21% success rate on third down against Saraland this year? Uh, I would believe it. 14 points a game. They give up only two touchdowns through the air. Now McGill's going to have to hurry here. Play clock at one. Do they get it off? Barely. And Inge gets stood up. It'd be a half a yard there. maybe? Yeah, they were. Just that play was took so long to... Get going, and Bowie, guess what year he is? Sophomore. Sophomore. <laughs> Linebacker. They've got people Phil. pulling around. They've got, uh, you know, a lot of action on that front line trying to just give him enough where he can find a crease. Yeah. Sarah Land plugs it up, and it looks like McGill's going to go for it. Cam York in there to chip in on that stop as well. Down to... Fourth and about four, five yeah. seconds, Jim. Murchison steps up in the pocket. Now wants to scramble out to the left. He's got a little bit of room there. Puts the 6 3 frame down along with his shoulder, and he's got the first down. Looks like he does, right? It's not his first choice to run it. But also didn't try to force something. No, there. no, no, no. Well done by Murchison. He did what he had to do, basically. Got a little bit of a crease here. Now suddenly the corner comes up. Had and to, Murchison uses his size to get yeah, the first down. Had to make a little move on Crenshaw there to get the Roof Doctor's first down. But he does as we approach the halfway point here in quarter number two in the Dr. Pepper Maroon zone. Inge a little more space that time as he gets to the second level yeah. before Thompson brings him down. But you'll take that on first down each time. Yeah, about halfway to a first down there. Maybe give him six. What you're wondering is what they're seeing right now up in the press box. Do they think, as things get compressed ever more, that they're they're going to be able to run it in on Sarah Land, or do you use this second and sh you know shorter to do a play action and find somebody on a slant? They you know struggling to get that touchdown. Haywood in the slot to the top of the screen. They send Inge out of the backfield. There's pressure coming. Flip to the middle of the field. They go to Haywood. And he's got the touchdown. Saw that play at the other end of the field. We did. They same. converted a, four, a third down on that one yeah. this time. Exact same play. <laughs> Look at Hayward. Third <laughs> touchdown of the season for Roscoe. And McGill stays in this one with a chance to pull within six. You know, Jeff Kelly said you watch film on them early this year. They were struggling. They're doing a, they're, he said they just look a whole lot better now. Well, with our own eyes, we can see that. Set up by Eager's long return on the kickoff. Yeah, McGill's like, we'll take a short field and see what yeah, we can do is, with it. This is fun. Yeah. This is fun, right? Yeah, yeah. Green cuts it to six. Murchison to Roscoe Haywood, his third touchdown of the season. Only the third touchdown through the air the Spartans have given up this year. But McGill, two and right back in this one here on Friday Night Rivals. You know, Dan was talking earlier about our Wednesday night pregame show. We record that at AOC. Great place to hang out there, get to meet uh, young athletes and also talk with our coaches. And then they also give you our Friday night Facebook live stream. Our great friends at Alabama Orthopedic Clinic. Sometimes we get some doctors in there and talk some injuries. I like when they bring the models, like the knee model and uh, oh, yeah. those things. Then Dr. Roca comes in there and he talks about hanging out in the champs Elion in yeah. France. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's fun at AOC. That, uh, we weren't expecting that conversation, <laughs> were we? And uh, 
I think he was surprised when we knew where it was. That was the other thing. Well, I never Ooh. said that I did. I was, I was not going to single you out. Not there. It's, now, this one goes back to the 23. Is, that was a bit discombobulated by Cam Lafitte. By the way, this is 1886 on this date. The unveiling of the Statue of Liberty. Ah. A uh, gift from France, of course, in the harbor there between New York and New Jersey. And uh, a million people were at that event. Back back then, wow. a million people. The parades up and down Broadway, uh, celebrations. The not quite as populated then no. uh, as it was either. That's a, it was a big deal. Huge number. So, Lacey. Leads the Spartans back out here. McWilliams, his defense is stout up front as Dylan Sauce talked about. You just don't see a nose play sideline to sideline. He plays like a like an off-ball linebacker, yeah, really. Sideline really. to sideline. I, I, to side I, line, right? I, I don't know how he does it. I, I'd have to just isolate on him to watch it. He's got really good speed, but he's also a really good penetrator, too. That's why they have him right there up front, hey, oftentimes don't over get the ball. Both of those. No! He's a really good penetrator, yeah. or he's got good speed. Uh huh. No, he's, he's not, you know, not huge, 220 pounds. He's just a fighter and an athlete and wants it. Second and 10. Lacey again goes with the low ripping arm angle, trying to get Womble, who has the touchdown tonight and that went off his hands and third and ten you know those passes look great when they're complete they don't look so great and when, you, when, when you throw it a little behind the receiver and there's some heat on that one too yeah there was so third and ten coming up boy Gil gets a stop here yeah let's uh take it one play at a time here Lacey incomplete. Goes back to Womble. Schamberger on the coverage. And a quick three and out. For, you know, started on that kickoff. Just didn't handle the kickoff really well. Right. And then they go. Well, that, that's what happens. Out. You know, you're, you're normal when you start at your own 20. Now everything's kind of even. And, and Williams was involved in none of those plays. Right. So your most dynamic player doesn't get, doesn't get a target. And, uh. You're starting it, you know, deep in your own territory. You suddenly, your offense looks human. Kirkland will stand back inside the five. Returnable. Good kick to the 45-yard line, and Schamberger does not get mm. very far oh, before great. Curtis, the linebacker, is down there on special teams. Yeah. But still, 45, you'll... Take that field position. You'll take it, but it looked like Schamberger had a had a shot, but really good play by Curtis. Good special teams play that nobody will talk about, but we'll talk about it right now because it just happened and it made a big difference. So, uh, so McGill thoughts to pass along. Vince Dooley uh, passing away at age how about that ninety? Of I course, got the McGill ties. Yes, went to what became McGill, born in Mobile, and yeah, in the Mobile Mc Hall of Fame back Mc in McGill. the eighty-seven, I think. McGill Institute is what yeah. it was right then. The uh, girls' school was Bishop Tulin. So age 90, and uh, made a big impact here in Mobile. And of course, at Georgia after that. Fourth winning, winning his coach in the history of the Southeastern Conference. Yeah, there's been a good coach or two pass through that conference. Yeah, I think it's Bryant, Spurrier, and Saban, I believe, are the coaches ahead of Vince Dooley, who grew up in the area where the Civic Center is now, and uh, it was uh, not all roses and rainbows for Vince Dooley growing up, but they got him in the Catholic school and kind of straightened him out a little bit. Oh, Murchison bobbles the snap, pressure coming from the backside from Coleman, and does a good job just to get that one away. That's worked there by Bird to come over and give him up, give him a little pat as well. Vince Dooley's father, I don't think, was really involved in his life. I read the, the book that he wrote about himself, and, and uh, he was he was trouble on the streets. He was a battler. He was a fighter. The, the mother pleaded with the nuns, please take him and mm -hmm. give him some discipline. How about that? And he turned it around in sports and went on to become a Marine. Yep. A third and ten.
Murchison wants to air it out. He's got it at the far side. Eager and McGill has tied this one up on a 51-yard strike from Murchison to Eager and McGill with a chance to take the lead. You know, Eager's a, he's the wild card right there. He's there, Ryan Williams, pretty much, on his way to South Alabama to play wide receiver. Yeah, a go route is all it is. And whatever he did to... If it was a hitch and go, he was gone. And a nice ball by Murchison. Hung it up there. And Lafitte was trying to give chase. as get a flag before this one. Before the snap. Now. Substitution infraction. Too many men on the field. On the defensive team. Penalty is half the distance. It will remain a try. Do you, do you sit out your two? Two-point conversion here. Think about it. Moving up half the distance, and now you're going to still keep the. You just want to take the, the lead. Yeah, yeah. yeah, take the lead as opposed to maybe goes wrong. You're you're still tied. And Green gives McGill the lead at 17-16. Is eager. He wanted Murchison to come over. Murchison was holding on that one. Line did their job. Murchison did their job. Eager does his job again. And the Yellow Jackets on top now, 17-16 here late in the second. Hey, if you want to be this week's Wendy's Giant of the Week, if you're a junior or senior who plays football on any high school in our Alabama viewing area. You like could Anthony win. Like Eager? Like Eager. <laughs> Give it to him. Log on to UTV44.com. Click on the contest tab to be entered for a Wendy's Giant of the Week prize pack. Rules and regulations apply. Okay, McGill's got the lead. Kind of a shocker. But three minutes to go on the clock. Three and, three and some change. Can they hold on to it? But, you know, t until halftime. And they get the ball first coming yep. out. Yep. They have not wanted to kick it to Williams if possible, and they put Williams in the up spot on the far side, and they still kick it in his direction near the sideline at the 30 and up to the 43-yard line. So you both, both Sarah Land and Theodore had the huge game last week. Numbers one and three in the state for the region championship. Sarah Land wins, uh, goes down to Theodore. Theodore wins the game by a year. Uh, wins the game by a point in the biggest game of the year. And you wonder if both teams trying to get over that emotional game. Theodore right now leads St. Paul 6-0 with a half. Wow. Well, I think you answered your own question right there. And here you've got McGill with a 17-6 lead. And that is not to take anything away from this Yellow Jacket team because their defense held Sarah Land to those three field goals in the first quarter. Otherwise, this game could have gotten out of hand quickly. Yep. McWilliams, much of the same from this McGill defense trying to go on that right side. He had a great first drive of the game. Since then, not as much. McGill is frustrating Sarah Land Jim with some of their slants, penetration. It's kind of like a pain in the neck, you yeah. know, like, wow, I didn't know this was going to happen. And now Sarah Land maybe a little self-doubt. And they just they, they they come at you from just every yep. every angle, right? Yep, yep. They, now they leave, they leave themselves exposed sometimes. Sure. Lacey, this side able to get it off to Ryan Williams. Williams answers right back with a 54-yard touchdown. Sophomore to sophomore. And yeah. once he got it with a defender on his hip. There's nobody in the state that's going to catch him. No, I mean, the fans in the stands tonight are are going to remember this era of Sarah Land football for a long time. That'd be my guess because Williams is just so special. Running, away, He's running away from really good athletes, too. I think McGill wants to go for two to get this one back up to seven. Sarah Lynn. Uh, sorry, Sarah Lynn, yeah, to increase the lead over McGill to seven. 
And now McGill will get the ball back with, with a chance to score and get it back to start of the third quarter. We know the answer to my question. Could they hang on until halftime? Nope. Lacey. Knocked and going to be stopped just short of the far pylon with a late flag coming in. Wow. They get the stop, but the flag against him, maybe a, you'd have to guess, possibly a face, face mask. mask. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. They're not happy about it across the way. McGill with a big crowd that's come on up to Sarah Land. Yeah, they're with some reason to get boisterous here. In this second quarter, let's watch here at the end. Nothing there. Here in the play. Yep, there Personal he is. Personal foul. Face mask. Very on end. The defensive team. Cody yep. half the disc to the goal line. We'll replay the try. Yeah, Welch. Shamar Welch has had a great junior campaign for this McGill team. Had his hand in there. This time, McWilliams able to bang ahead and get the two-point conversion. And Sarah Land back on top by seven now. 24-7 with 2.32 to go in the second half. Just, you see this here. Lacey, not a deep drop. Quick snap and then just between the two defenders. And like I said, and when I say there's nobody in the state, I mean there is no one in the state who's going to catch no. the fast no. 40 runner. Really good, really good throw, too. Right between Definitely. two McGill defensive backs and a corner and a safety. And again, he gets the ball out so quick. He's accurate. Hits him in stride. Hits him in stride. You hit a sprinter in stride. See you later. Yep. And Williams. With his second touchdown here tonight, 18 <laughs> on the year. Blows a kiss to the crowd. <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> We've had a lot here in the first half. Absolutely. Been great. This one to the middle of the field, and McGill will just fall down there at the 25. Just two plays. And less than a minute with the touchdown. Hey, while McGill gets it back, do want to congratulate McGill Tulin and the Dirty Dozen, their 22nd state championship in volleyball. How about that? Kate Wood, the coach, Anna Grace Sparks was the MVP. And, you know, they hadn't. Had one instance since back to back, I think, in 2017 and 18, yep. uh, which seems like for the Dirty Dozen, it was, seems uh, like a very uh, long drive. A drought, time. yeah. The 22nd state championship there. How so, about this from Hall of Famer, former Regents uh, Vice President Terry Ankerson? Dan, my mama was Coach Dooley and his brother Bill's babysitter many years ago. How about that? Wow. So, yeah, Terry's mom would have been. You know, closer to, I guess, 100 if she were still alive today. That'd be my guess. Or a little more. If he was 90, Vince was 90. Yeah. yeah. Murchison, he wants to air it out. Looking to go up the middle of the field to Eager again. And better coverage that time by the Spartans. You want to do the math? How far was that throw? It was a rope. Wow. He, uh, he almost gave him a chance. Just a little too far. Coming up. Two minutes and 19 seconds. It'll be the Hanson Supertex halftime show. You know, you throw a punch. We're not just going to jab back. We're going to haymaker. <laughs> haymaker again right back at you. Halftime, we'll have some great highlights of first half action here. Stats, some out-of-town scores, including UMS on top 10-0 over Williamson. Terry Curtis looking to tie the all-time wins lead with Buddy Anderson in the state of Alabama. Stop third down coming up, and down. I think if you're Sarah Line, you probably can take a timeout here to stop the clock. Yeah, McGill would like to establish a little Come more out, on Red the team. ground. They took the big first shot there the on half. first down. Might have had some because it was eager again, but overthrew him. And this kid is a tough runner. He really hasn't found any big room, but uh, Sarah Lane hasn't afforded them any either. Yeah, Sarah Lane takes the timeout there, says, hey, we get a Stop and we'll see if we can put some more points on the board here in the first half. Sarah Land's running a little bit better than McGill. Uh, 
You got Inge with 11 rushes, only 17 yards, so it's almost just trying to complimentary, just to keep you thinking they might run it. On the other hand, McWilliams has been pretty solid. 11 rushes, 53 yards. Talking about McGill winning the state championship. How about Bayside Academy? 21st consecutive state crown there. That's a national record. They have 31 state championships in school history. And went five sets, beat Spanish Fort to do it. Westminster Chris, Christian wins it in 5A. Montgomery Catholic, 4A. Prattville, Donahoe and Addison. Uh, state champions on the volleyball side of things. So congratulations. Yeah, that's great. To those champs, young ladies. Murchison, that one hit at the line of scrimmage. And also stops the clock with exactly two minutes left. And so two minutes and two timeouts and Ryan Williams. And now it seems like an eternity before halftime. And this McGill defense is going to be tested yet again. And certainly with a chance to get some great field position as Williams will stand back at about the 35. Uh-oh. Green end over end kick and it checks up and bounces out of bounds and Williams didn't get a chance to get after that one. That was a good punt there by Green. McGill crawls all the way back from 16 to 3 to take the lead and then moments later just a strike slant over the middle to Ryan Williams. And how about Eager too? Check out these numbers. Make sure I've got it right on Eager. Yeah, two catches, 110 yards for Anthony Eager, McGill Tulin. That will help your season average on your per catch. And at the 41. No hitting the brakes here for Sarah Land. Not with the not with the ability you've got on the field. Yep. Williams with a big cushion to the bottom of the screen. Three receivers this way as well, and they come out of the backfield that goes out of the hands and off C.D. Gill, another sophomore who's got 33 catches and six touchdowns on the year. Uncharacteristic drop for Gill, who we saw. I guess we've seen them a couple of times this year against Daphne and Spanish Fort, yep. right? Week one against Daphne, I think week four against uh, Spanish Fort, both wins, obviously. Their first loss was last week, a heartbreaker to Theodore in a game that everybody in the state was aware of. Ooh, I'd love to see those two local teams meet in the semis. That could happen. Lacey again looks to pass, drops back, wants the middle of the field, fires it up, and it's incomplete. Good coverage back there as he wanted to go to Gill. Gill had a step, too. Yep. Flag back at the 35, and that, too, was a long heave. It was a long heave. Both these kids can really throw it. How about watching these two quarterbacks match up for the next couple of years on Friday Night Rivals? I'm with you. And I think Murchison, I think he's really winning over his teammates. Don't you see that? I, 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 absolutely. 6'3", big size. They're in the play. Holding on the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty. It is declined. Third down. You heard Tim Porter say McGill declines it, uh, declines it, so third and ten from the 41. Now a pair of receivers to each side. Williams to the bottom of the screen. Lacey tipped up in the air and incomplete. They were trying to get to Williams, and McGill's defense comes up with a stop there, so they decline it to force the third and ten, and then they get the stop, and now they're going to get a chance to get the ball back here. Yeah. We've said that a lot, but this one now just 30 seconds off the clock on those drives. Outside linebacker Ethan Wilson. Actually, outside linebacker defensive end. Good play, Wilson, and uh, nearly a turnover. Schamberger back at about the 30, waiting for Kirkland. It looks like they might be going to bring some pressure. Instead, they'll set up the return. Another good kick. Schamberger going to have to call for a fair catch at the 16. 
Not surprising that Schamberger does the right thing on that play. Yeah. He's had football talk to his ear just at the house from a very young age. Yeah, with his what, dad. what a nice visit with his father, who we probably haven't really talked to in a conversation in about 20 years. He was the head coach at BC Rain when he was a yep. very young man in his early 30s. Had some good teams there, too. Absolutely. Nice man and a really nice kid. We'll and, see how that all happened. And his son on the pregame show, if you didn't say, he said he's just hoping for a chance for his dad to coach him one day. Yep. And that's come to fruition here at McGill. Now, Inge with a little space pushing up to the 25. You know, it was nice too, Jim, really in the moment. Uh, Coach Schamberger said, I, I told my son, we're just, we're, we're Let's do this thing. We're just making memories. Yep. Pretty cool. Yep. Second down. Second. And a couple here for McGill. Not in a huge hurry. Stan said they'll get the ball back to start the second half. Back to Inge, and he is not going to get much more than maybe the line of scrimmage. Mm, now. Sarah Land's going to take another timeout. I think you know, if you're if you're Sarah Land, you're, Come out you're, on the red team. you're, you're, you're thinking take a timeout of the half. Right, not that much time left, but we make him punt it to Ryan Williams. Yeah, I mean, there's there's, there's, there's your there's your possible ace yeah. in the hole right there. Right. Get a, every time he touches the ball, it's a chance for six. Yep. Now, if you're McGill, huh? I mean, you've got some dynamite on your side yeah. of the field, too. Also, third and one. I think you get the first down, get the clock stopped momentarily while they get everything reset. Maybe take a shot. And maybe we wouldn't be surprised. Coach Joseph, they're not calling two plays. All right, here's what we're going to do here. Get the first down, get quickly lined up, and this is the play we're going to run. Yeah. Take I, your shot to Eager again. I would. I, that makes a whole lot of sense to me. you got to get the first down first. Uh, Sarah oh. Lane, with all that size I've been talking about on the uh, defensive line, oh. linebackers play close up to uh, the uh, line of scrimmage, too. Yeah, and uh, a yard has been tough to come by just yep. running off tackle. Yep. Merchison now will go, uh, looked like he was going to go under center. Stead wants to flip it out on the far side. He's going to do it. And he's going to have the first down. And Eager goes out of bounds nice. to stop the clock. Eager just set himself up for the uh, for another long shot or two. And he knows it. Third catch of the night. Roof Doctor's first down. That was too easy, Jim. Too easy. I think everybody was thinking they were going to go right back to Inge to try to grind out that yard. And the, the wide receivers they were looking at, not as possession, but as trying to get something deep. Murchison, same play up the far side, eager. This time he won't get out of bounds as Lafitte pulls it down. We'll see, if, will McGill take a timeout? Well, they lost some valuable time yeah. there. Come out on the line team. Timeout. That's their first time out, 10 seconds left. Now you think you could try to take a shot to Again, if you just if you took a shot and picked up a chunk, Dan talked about Henry Green and his big leg kicking him in this direction pregame. You're gonna need. You're gonna to need pick about 20, 25, maybe yeah, to, yeah, to get him. Yeah. Comfortable, so it's not a super long one to close out the half. But maybe you got a little something you've been saving all all season and a little. A little something special here on the, uh, with 10 seconds to go. Yeah, it's like hook and lateral, one of those yeah. things. You've got some good receivers, including one that can run with nearly anybody in the state. And then Sarah Land's going to drop everybody it's back toward Mobile. It's <laughs> tough to trick a defense that's set up like this. Murchison. Wants to go to the far sideline. He does, and Eager's got it. So they pick up the first down, stop the clock. And now you got a chance to do it again with six seconds left. It'd be tough to get it. Tough to get it in the middle of the field. Get your time out to get your field goal unit out here with six seconds left. 
You need to pick up about 20. And that's a lot to pick up in six seconds. So I think you're just going to take your take your shot here. Murchison steps up in the pocket, hit, gets it off, incomplete, great play, and now a flag comes in. I think that might, might be intentional grounding because there was not a receiver around. No, I didn't, the clock ran out. It should not have. The ball was incomplete. Was At about, three seconds. Yeah, it was I agree. Incomplete, but it's going to be. During the play, intentional grounding. Penalty is declined. Halftime. Wow. I don't quite understand that. I don't uh, understand that. All right. Uh, Heather's down on the sidelines with Coach Jeff Kelly. Heather. Coach, that McGill tool in offense is playing as gritty as it has all season. Talk about the problems that it has given your offense. Well, they, they've caught us in some coverage situations that uh, we've had some mistakes in there. They, they're a good football team. they got some good players. Coach Joseph does a good job. You know, for us, you know, this thing here, we had we had the ball down in the red zone three times, had to settle for field goals. And, you know, we got to get that corrected. You know, we can't kick field goals all night. we got to we got to get in there and punch it in the end zone. Message on both sides of the ball for your team. we got to run the ball. we got to get back to running the ball, and we got to finish drives. Right now, we're not finishing drives offensively, we're giving up too many big plays right there, so we got plenty to correct. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Guys. All right, thanks, Heather. And at the end of tonight's game, we will have Herc Reynolds' players of the game. We'll have three of them choose from. Rod Taylor, the running back for Baker, had the big touchdown run here that kept Baker's offense off the field there in that first half when they jumped out to the quick lead with a yeah. couple of uh, three interceptions in the first half and Taylor who's had a great year running the ball out of the backfield but this time he does it on special teams and gets the touchdown there and he also gets the recognition as the Friday Night Rivals player of the game we'll give you three to choose from you might be able to choose a couple of them that uh, you think we'll have on <laughs> right there, now, uh, yeah. right, right now. So we'll do that, and then we'll come back for our halftime show here in Sarah Land, Spartan Stadium, the home team on top by a touchdown through two. This is the Hanson Super Tex halftime show. Hanson Supertech's halftime show. Sarah Land on top 24-17 as we round out 6A Region 1 football. We spent a lot of time in this region here uh, throughout the course of our broadcast season and wrap things up here tonight. Sarah Land finishing up second in the reason going to the playoffs. McGill Tulin going to finish a game out. And look at what McGill Tulin did. Lost Montgomery Catholic, who's having a, a great year yeah. early. And then that, that I got to think when they look back, that one is St. Paul's. The this is one that are like uh, they, were, they were young they really didn't have an identity on offense and uh, it cost him in that game for sure and see how things shook out there theodore now the top ranked team in 6a and unbeaten in both jeff kelly and coach norman joseph we were talking to him before we started taping our pregame show at aoc both of them just singing the praise of theodore how good this 9 and 0 Bobcat team is and it took all they had yep to beat Sherland and they had a, quite a battle with McGill through the first half as well Spanish Fort comes in at the number 3 seed in the region and then St. Paul's will go on the road both Spanish Fort and St. Paul's on the road then you got McGill 5 and 4 so they're going to finish up at worst 4 and 4 in the region not make the playoffs Blunt and Murphy Blunt beating up on Murphy uh, here tonight, and then Baldwin County and Robertsdale. One of those two teams going to get their first win of the night. Yeah, and of how the season? Yeah, how good was Blunt against St. Paul's last week? Yeah, just uh, played it, played them off their feet. Yep, and then uh, McGill goes out and then just puts a, a big win against yep. against Blunt. So, yep. Uh, top four teams going on to uh, the playoffs there, and Theodore and Sarah Land will both be at home to open things up in the postseason, Spanish Fort and St. Paul's on the road. It's this very tough region. And, you know, it's a, uh, it kind of some of the teams, you know, Blunt had some, started to see them come on a little bit. McGill Tulin playing better. Uh, but the region was, it was top heavy for sure all, all year. It was, uh, you know, Theodore comes down from 7A. Yeah. Uh, this is their first year in 6A, right? Yep. So they just 
fitting in nicely in, in the tough neighborhood. No doubt about it. So there are our region standings and Sue McGill, uh, as we said, did all year that that tough loss to St. Paul's and then they go win four of their next six after that. So their losses, Spanish Fort, Theodore and St. Paul's in the region. So halftime here on our halftime uh, Hanson Supertex show. It is Saraland on top by a score of 24-7. We're back after this. Here's a message from our sponsor, Dr. Pepper. Hey everybody, Heather Healy here for Friday Night Rivals and standing next to me is the one, the only Keith Watson, the sales center manager for Coca-Cola United Gulf Coast. You've got a very important piece of hardware in your hand. Tell absolutely, us what it is. Absolutely, absolutely. It's just, you know, we wanted to make something uh, a little exciting for the teams, the coaches, the players to be able to win this big game because it is a big deal. You know, you get to play on TV on Friday night. Uh, it's, it is something special. And I think that in kids and the coaches play and they coach at a different level when they're on TV and that excitement just adds to that. It really does, and I have to tell you, um, the representatives with Coca-Cola who are out there, they are so excited as well. What's your favorite part about this trophy? Uh, I love the helmet, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I do drink a lot of Dr. Pepper, yeah. so that's a great combination. It is a great combination yeah. indeed when uh, everybody, the cheerleaders, the fans, coaches, the players, everyone comes around just yeah. for this. It's a very, very special to see. Just just a uh, great opportunity. Thank you for letting us be a part of it. Well, thank you for being Absolutely. a part of it and being a huge part of this year's Friday Night thank Rivals. You. Welcome back to the Hanson Supertex Halftime Show. Hanson Supertex Halftime Show continuing on here from Spartan Stadium in Saraland with a home team number four ranked Saraland on top 24-17. But, uh, boy, I think uh, I, I think Saraland, if they had a hope here tonight that maybe jump out and ahead, rest some of our guys going to the playoffs, they're in a tussle right now as uh, our old partner, uh, partner's mother used to, uh, used to say, right? <laughs> yeah, no doubt. This is a tussle. And McGill made it a tussle two ways. They held Sarah Land to field goals when Sarah Land was easily in the red zone with the Dr. Pepper maroon zone. Yep. And then when they got behind 16 to 3, they went ahead and hit some big strike plays and took the lead. Yep. Almost unthinkable. See what Sarah Land has done here. They have not had a lot of super close games uh, aside from the, the great matchup down in Theodore last week when the Bobcats kicked a field goal late to win that one 27-26. But they'll wrap things up uh, here tonight. And then next week they'll be right back here at home for a game against Wetumpka, who's 7-2 and two going into their final game tonight. You, if you're a coach, you know, if you're Coach Eric Collier out at Theodore, you, uh, you're you so happy to get that one seed because one and four is such a difference. That two and three is just all the teams are good in the playoffs, yep. but one and four you feel a lot better at than two, three. And I think Eric Collier probably does, and he probably just feel happy with the win too, you know, the, for holding on to that undefeated season. We haven't seen Theodore this year. But from what we hear, they just have got a lot of really good defensive players all over the field. Maybe not a bunch of guys going D1, yep. Power 5, but a bunch of players that are really good at the high school level. So you see how that changed around last week. It was Sarah Land ranked number one, Theodore ranked number three. After the win, Theodore vaults over everyone. They're the top team going into uh, the playoffs, they right now lead St. Paul's 6-0 at the half. Clay Chalkville, second, Hillcrest, Tuscaloosa, third, followed by Sarah Land, Hartsville, Gardendale, Muscle Shoals, Mountain Brook, Center Point, and Carver, Montgomery, as we will have some of our local teams matching up uh, with some of those teams here in the top 10 to start the playoffs next week as well. Here in our Hanson Supertex halftime show, it is a... 24-17 lead for Sarah Land. We'll come back for more on our Hampton, uh, Hanson Supertex halftime show here from Sarah Land right after this. It was a busy first half here to say the least. Well, you know, a lot of games end like 24-17. Well, that was all condensed into one 
one half of football. Yeah, we saw three field goals to open up this game, and then we started seeing the ball get into the uh, get into the end zone a little more. Yeah, and if you were walking in and saying, "Hey, what had happened?" Okay, we're going to let you know right now. Uh, it was uh, early on. It looked like Sarah Land had a chance to really take this game and jump out to a big lead. They had a second and goal from the two. McGill's defense stopped him on second and third, so Kirkland gets the first field goal. Then on the next possession, Delvin Gully comes up with a pick, and it looks like Sarah Land's going to be back in business again as they're inside the five. McGill's defense again holds him to a Hunter Kirkland field goal, so yeah. it's 6-0. Then McGill marches it down the field, and they get... A Henry Green field goal make it 6-3. Then Sarah Land goes on a bit of a run here. Lacey was looking for Williams. Instead, goes back the other way, and he finds Brooks Womble. Womble, his third touchdown of the year. And Murchison on a fourth down, scrambles. Not really what he's known to do a lot, but yeah. gets it there, keeps the drive alive. And then he's able to get it to Roscoe Haywood. Middle screen worked a couple of times in the first half. And then up top, this one. From 50 plus to Anthony Eager. That put McGill on top 17 16. Then the next play, KJ Lacey, 53 yards, puts it in the hands of Ryan Williams, the Alabama commit, and he's off to the races. And that's where we get. How about just 46 rushing yards in the first half combined between the two teams? And yeah. we got 41 points on the board. 45 rushing for Sherland, 21 for McGill. Not much on the ground. These teams have been. Tough at the line of scrimmage. McGill's actually outgained Sarah Land, but those big plays from Ryan Williams, uh, and of course, Sarah Land's had the short field. They've had the short field with all the punt returns and kick returns that have yep. set them up in great field position. Both bands dazzling here at halftime. Agree. McGill and the Spanish, uh, the St. Paul. Uh, I'll get it right yet. The Sarah Land band. That's them. That's a red. That's a red in all three <laughs> of those schools. Twenty-four seventeen here at the half. Sarahland on top, 24-17 is we're just a few minutes away here from getting underway in the third quarter. Sarahland will kick off. McGill will get it to open things up. Give us a chance before that for Dan to tell us about our Scholastic Athletes of the Week. Yeah, Andy Citron's Scholastic Athletes include Stephen Keena, uh, McGill Tulin Catholic High School. He's got a GPA of uh, 4.38. That's pretty sporty. He's going to Head to college and major in engineering. He also plays baseball, by the way. And at uh, Sarah Land High School, it looks like it's going to be a young lady. It's Rita Kelly. Sarah Land High School. She's in the 12th grade, 4.47, 28 on the ACT, sports, basketball, and soccer. So she does her work there. Advanced honors classes, National Honor Society, you know, on and on with that. Plans to attend South Alabama or Alabama State with assistance from the uh, AL National Guard or the Air Force Reserves and major in engineering. So congratulations on those two and all the kids were honored. The pregame, the Sarah Land seniors, players, and just regular old citizens of the, yep. the city of Sarah Land who were outstanding with the, their college plans. And I know the same is always true at McGill. Yep, and uh, Andy Citroen, uh, injury attorney, is going to give one of those scholastic athletes a $5,000 scholarship at the end of the season. We heard Coach Kelly as Heather caught up with him before he took his team into the locker room. And let's find out what Coach Norman Joseph told Heather. She's back down the sidelines. Heather. Well, before I could even ask a question, you know, Coach Joseph stopped me and he said, I love what this team is doing so far. So don't ask any negative questions. The positive side, I love how they're battling. I love how they're battling the last two quarters. We got two more quarters left to play. A lot of ball game left to play and a lot of ball game left on our hands. We just got to keep our heads up. We have to make sure that we secure the ball, that our quarterback is being secure and he's not overthrowing. He's making sure that the lanes are clear and he's got a clear and direct path on where to go, on where to throw, and where to score. Guys? Uh, we saw a lot of that in the first half, and we'll see if it continues on. Both these defensive coaches going to make some adjustments at halftime. I think the special teams coaches are going to also talk about how do we how do we try to limit the lethalness of both of these returners well, for each one. you got to make sure that your special teams has got some of your special players on it uh and i mean defending yep. when you're punting when you're kicking because the talent 
receiving the football is pretty immense. Uh, and they can, uh, they, Ryan Williams has given this uh, team great field position nearly every time he sets the ball in a special teams play. Yeah, Eager on the kickoff returns has been stellar for McGill as well. And Sarah Land will kick off. to open things up here in quarter number three. As you see Jeff Kelly having a conversation with one of the officials here. Let's see, Blunt leads Murphy 22-14 and a half. Daphne on top of Hillcrest Evergreen 34-0 in the third. Fairhope beating Briarwood Christian 23-7 at the half. Third quarter on Old Shell Road. UMS Wright leads Williamson 10-8. Wow. And the battle for one of these two teams going to get their first win of the year in this region. Baldwin County leads Robertsdale 27-21. Faith Academy in the third quarter leads LaFleur 61-0. Gosh. And fourth quarter, Theodore gets a safety. They lead St. Paul's 8-0 in the fourth quarter. Wow. Um, that one. Gulf Shores with a big win over BC Rain last night. Foley beat Jackson Olin. Jackson beat Davidson 44-14. Leroy beat Washington County 56-6. Hey, what, uh, Fred Riley's watching the game here tonight, and he always sends us a lot of texts throughout the uh, throughout the season. I call but, it spam. Yeah. <laughs> he does give us, give us some good insight that we can pass along, and he's got a lot of history, obviously. And just want to say hey to coach watching the game tonight. I always appreciate the insight that he gives us during the season. He had a great run at Davidson. Oh. I mean, teams that were right there, right there for it all in 6A and then 7A, right? Yep. Now the coach of the Fairhope Storm. They'll start playing up again in March. Enter entertaining brand of football. Kirkland. Sends to the near side. Eager says, nope, wanted to grab it, but instead of fair catch. Yeah, he wasn't happy just, about that either. Yeah. Eager's like, look. McCarron caught that one, and Eager's like, yeah, he's like, uh, and I think Coach Norman Joseph would like to see Eager with that one yeah. be in his uh, well, his hands as well. Uh, yeah, agree. I mean, he's, he's made some big plays uh, and special teams, too, and, and, and flipped the field. Uh, so, you know, they just want to make sure they secured it, but uh, you, you got to call off the uh, right fielder. The center fielder needs the ball right there. So Murchison threw nearly a pick six on his first pass, got returned inside the four, but since then has been stellar. Let's see if he can get his team back. Even up. Inge pushes forward, gets a little room this time off on the left to about the 28. Oh, Murchison is just getting, he split split sees uh, split a lot of the playing time with Aiden Schamberger all year long until he really took over a few weeks ago in the Spanish sport game we did here on Friday Night Rivals and in-game experience so valuable as a sophomore yeah I mean we liked everything we saw from him that night and uh, again tonight Can't do this if you're McGill. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take a timeout. Somehow, white team. Before First time out of the half. The snap. Of course, Joseph not happy about that one, so we'll take a timeout just underway in the third here on Friday Night Rivals. Hey, last time uh, we get to thank all of our great friends for being a part of Friday Night Rivals, including the United States Coast Guard and the Mobile County Sheriff's Department. Also, Greer's. How many times have we thank Greer's over the years? Oh, yeah. I've been spending with us forever. And also, same with our good friends at Barrow Fine Furniture. And happen to be in any of those locations? Let them know you appreciate them being a part of Friday Night Rivals. Double pass here. Roscoe Haywood fires it up the far side and eager. Everybody's looking around. They're going to give him the catch. I think they are. It's a flag, but they are 
yeah, they did drop the flag. So I, yeah, the I, I'd like to tell you definitively that he caught the ball, but I don't know that for sure. It, it, it looked like he did. The officials did not get a sign, but our great crew crew will look here as he dropped it. But they're going to mark it. They're, they're going to give him the catch. Pass interference. Yeah, he, there was something about the defense. Body language. Yeah. Penalty yeah. is declined. The result of the so, play is a first down. Uh, yeah, they gave him the catch, and now you got, of course, now you got the the. The, our feet up here on the enormous jumbotron. The jumbotron did not give him the catch. No, but Inge will bang ahead on first down. Don't you just admire the way that McGill stays committed to the run, even yeah. though they're not getting any big runs? It's just kind of enough to let you know they they can do that. Hey, Heather. Hey guys, well, we've got some banana pudding over here. We're going to have a little switcheroo here because I've got Miss Janice MacArthur who has made it. Do you guys remember the first week when we had this and we couldn't get enough of it? All right, Janice, you make this every home game. Talk to me a little bit about why you make this every home game and why it's so delicious. I make it every week. It's just something I wanted to do to encourage the, the coaches and for the, especially the coaches for doing such a beautiful job with our young men out on the field in everyday life. How long have you been doing it? For the last, I, I know 10 years or longer. <laughs> At least 10 years. Now, I've got a good banana pudding recipe, but it is not near as good as this one. Tell me a little bit about what goes into this one. This, into this banana pudding, I use condensed milk, yep. instant, banana, instant banana pudding, okay. uh, milk, cool whip, okay. and vanilla wafers, okay. and then I use some more. Cool Whip. Okay. <laughs> so you can't get enough Cool Whip, is that correct? You can't get enough Cool Whip. All right. You guys want some? I'll bring you guys some in a second. You said you were going to last time we were here, and we were still waiting. So I'll give you some. We'd love Thank some of that banana pudding. So good. So good. I mean, that's, that's high school football. She loves to make it yep. for the coaches. Yeah. Just because. What they for do what for they the kids. Do. Yeah, just that's high school football, right? Boy, that was almost a touchdown. Yeah. I mean, Hayward had to grab it, had to, had to reach for it a little bit. Roscoe Hayward. Got a touchdown tonight. Yep. So we're going to bring up fourth and short here for the Yellow Jackets. Murchison looks over. Play clock now. Inside five. They fake. Murchison wants to keep it, and he is going to be yard short. Short of the first down. I'm not sure if he was designed on the keeper there. The Paramore comes up with the stop and a turnover on downs, but you go back to that one that you just, I, no. I, I think you went the wrong way. Mix up. Yep. Just mix up. He had it. I don't, yeah. Wow. What, what, what a play to have a mix up. A fourth down, you're going to go for it. You kind of laid it all out there and you, you never give the play a chance. After a drop. Yeah, after a drop. Oof. Wow. Lacey back to Williams, and Williams tried to break a tackle, but he has wrapped up Shamar Welch, the junior. Welch is very well aware of what he's dealing with out there in yeah. Ryan Williams. Seven picks and six PBUs on the year for yeah. Welch, but a good open field tackle, which great. is not easy to do. No, great tackle by Welch, and he is a good player. That's why he's matched up with Williams. Otherwise, what are you doing there? Yeah, those two can be lined up next to each other next year, across yeah. from each other next year as well as Give to McWilliams, and this time off the left side, Sante McWilliams still on his feet inside the 30, 20, 10, and all the way down to the 7. I was watching the outside, Welch and, uh, and, and Williams battle, and there goes Sante McWilliams. And that's his first big run of the night, and it is a very big run. He picks up 46. He's bobbing and weaving and the, all the way down, almost to the end zone, five-yard line. In the Dr. Pepper maroon zone, they go right back to him, trying to squirt through on the right side. This is where McGill has really done a great job forcing three field goals from Saraland having it inside the five. 
Yeah, and I think I've mentioned they were at the five there. They were actually at the seven, so he picks up two, and you're right. They really have light to the right side. This McGill defense again. Jeff Kelly told Heather coming off the field, so we got to get down here. We got to get touchdowns. We can't kick field goals. Yeah, let's watch closely. McGill really likes to bring people and take chances and get in the backfield. And that's what they do again. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not passive defensively, Jim. They're yeah. very aggressive. It leaves them exposed sometimes in certain areas or on the back side, but you only got five yards to defend. They want to get to the ball carry before he gets going uphill. Ethan Wilson going downhill. Senior for the Yellow Jackets come up, comes up with a stop. And so but, now they bring out, bring the two tight ends off the field and they'll go spread them out with the wide receivers. Gil Dees come in along with Williams and Wobble to the bottom of the screen. Lacey rolls out, looking, still looking, tries to fire it off and incomplete. And McGill's defense, and you know Jeff Kelly did not want to send out the field goal team, but has to take the points. Here they come again. That's gut check time down there at the five-yard line. McGill now, for the fourth time, yep. has held this team to a field goal attempt. Kirkland's perfect yeah. on the night. And he'll stay that way. Increase the lead to 10. 46-yard run, biggest of the night. More than they had on the ground in the first half. Found that crease. McWilliams not afraid of the contact at all for a kid about 180 pounds. Schamberger stays in the play there to push him out, but they hold him to a field goal. Sarah Lane out top by 10 here in the third. Five minutes gone by here in the third. Sarah Lane, six plays, 59 yards, two minutes. And 17 seconds to increase their lead to 10. Okay, so I'm just going to go out and say it. Go ahead Mi and say it. Miss Janice MacArthur's banana pudding is the best I've ever had in my life. That was a big scoop you put in your mouth there. That wasn't like kind of. Well, I didn't have a lot of time. I like well, 30 second time out. Yeah, well, you didn't. I wanted it, to give you, it the taste. You, you didn't take a lot of time. Eager. What are you? Is this some sort of Coney Island thing? <laughs> what are you doing there, Jim? Well, I wanted to, I just wanted okay. to get it. Heather yeah. delivered it up to us. She and did, yeah. No, I'm just talking about just uh, etiquette here in the Western world. Well, how, do you, how you eat something in front of others. Well, just uh, let's, let's think about that. There's a little multiple bit. spoons in there. Uh, so okay. Just wait till the next commercial break and see. Uh, that's fine. What it looks like. Oh, the best banana pudding I've ever had in my uh, in my life. All right, so McGill's defense gets the stingy stop down in the red zone to hold to a fourth field goal here tonight. And, you know, how many games do you, you see where you kind of let a team hang around, hang around, hang around, and then pretty soon something happens in the fourth quarter the team is hanging around is back on top. Still committed to the run. You like that, too? It, it keeps the clock running, kind of shortens the game. You, don't, you just see you don't want to give Sarah Land a lot of touches. Yeah, you're not, no quick th three and outs, you know. Ah, see, there we go. Hang huh? on. Here we ah, go. I had to go back. I, uh, you take the play-by-play -play on this one, Dan? Huh? Well, right back them. Second down. McGill, too. Hey, this play-by-play -play stuff is easy. Second ah. down, McGill. Mm. Oh, so good. Play action, eager. And he is clocked right there at the line right, of scrimmage. I'm, I'm done. I'm good. Just easy there. Easy. I got it now. Right. So bring we got up. It's third down. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, that banana pudding. So uh, so good. So just trying to get some isolation here. And how, how about how about the job Crenshaw to fight through the block yep. to get to Eager? Right. Third and nine for the Yellow Jackets. Down 10. They have led 
in this game in the first half. We're on top 17 16 at one point. Murchison rolling out, looking now, wants to go deep again, middle of the field, able to find it. And he's got Roscoe Haywood. And Haywood with a catch and the flag. Boy, Murchison looking over the whole field. Yeah, you know what happened, Jim, when he broke when he rolled out and broke contain on the edge there. Not the fastest kid. That just gave him a little time to breathe and look downfield. And then he delivered. And you got to feel there's going to be yards added on to this at the end of the play. Well, they give McGill a catch on a similar ball that they didn't really catch. Yeah. This is probably going to be face mask at 15 yards. So let's watch. I love there's a, it's not a good snap. He rolls out. That was not scripted into the play. Second in the play. Yep. Personal foul. Face mask. On the defense, 15 yards on the end of the run will result in a first down. All the way up to the 31. Haywood's having a big night here tonight. And McGill trying to get back within one score. Want the screen tipped. Incomplete is Antonio Coleman, the sophomore. Pass is tipped. Got his hand on that one, deflected it up, and boy, tip balls are just never the offense's friend. No, especially over the middle of the field. Three yep. catches, 53 yards, including that touchdown on the middle screen for Hayward. And the long pass completion yep. as well. It was ruled a completion to Eager. That, that was to Eager, right. Now second and 10, McGill kind of got down here on the first drive and stalled and turned it over on downs on some miscommunication of the fourth down attempt. This time Murchison keeps it himself and he slides and he's going to pick up about nine. Oh, he's mad with himself when he looks over where the sticks are, realizes he started that slide a little early. But it's but, two down territory, yeah. you know. Still, would. Isaiah Bowie was coming over. Might, still might not have been a bad business decision there to take yeah. the, the slide as <laughs> you know, I, quarterback. Well, the first down brings up third and short. Showed a little quickness there. Yeah. And again... Certainly probably not expecting him yep. to pull it down on a keeper. No. Third and one inch. Did not get. Got just to the line of scrimmage. And this is where McGill was last time. And then they turned it over on downs because Inge and Murchison weren't on the same page on the play. And it's fourth and less than a yard. This time is. Norman Joseph. Well, if you know the hand signals, you know what McGill's about to run. Again, they're going for the uh, first down so they can get a touchdown here and not settle on a field goal from this distance single, anywhere. Single coverage to Eager to the bottom of the screen. You wouldn't dare take a shot here, would you? Nope. Instead, they go to Inge, and he's going to plow ahead for a strong run into the Dr. Pepper maroon zone. Yeah, good blocking on the left side right there. Really good blocking. USA Health first down. Ryan Shine left tackle on the play. Watch some of the blocking up here. They clear it out, man. There you go. The lane is there. Inge, he knows what to do. He realized we just need to get less than a yard, and he was going forward. Up to the 19. And then kind of what we've seen a lot tonight. Nothing there is Coleman. Hey, he's a sophomore. Yeah. How about that? 6'3", 245. He's had a stout year. Paramore is just a junior. 6'3", 270. Started last year as a sophomore. Yeah, he did. I give him a yard there on... First down. You get a lot of effort out of Jimmy Bird, 299. They're, they're just good. Yep. Bird with a sack here tonight. Murchison, shoulder fake. Wants to go up top, looking for the corner, and he just overthrew Haywood. A little too much air under that one. Had what he wanted, the fake, and the pump fake did work. Haywood got a step down in the end zone, but uh, you know, that's, a, that's not an easy pass. How many times have we seen a UMS quarterback do that one. Do that play in 23 years. 2,900 two, 2, times. <laughs> Third and nine here coming up. And you would say, oh, two down, two down territory, but you got a great kicker. And yeah. Maybe pull within one score if you need to. 
They roll out Murchison, looks to get it to the sticks, and he does that to Eager, and very close. Wow, right at the sticks. It looks like he might be a little bit short. Is that possible? See the, might depend on the spot. It looked like he was going to get it easily, and then he kind of took a little jab step back, but they're going to say enough for the first down. So first and goal. Just inside the 10? Yeah. Okay. Eager with another catch here tonight. He's compiling quite a night. USA Health. First down. There's a clock down inside through my McGill. You have to hurry to get this one off. Murchison does. Now they flip it back. Coming around the other side is Haywood. Haywood trying to get the edge with a little high step. Spins. There's going to be a flag. That one's going to come back. I it just like. don't know. You know, it's the, it's the, the player that can't defend himself. You've got to block on the play. I, get, I don't know. Maybe you're just supposed to be in the way and not really deliver any contact. Watch. The block's going to be. Th th this was a good play not long ago. Uh, he, he, he was already yeah. engaged with somebody else. Yeah, let's watch here. He tried not to. Boy, boy. He actually got. He tried not to. Right, right, he actually pulled up, and then he got hit. Eager got hit from behind by the Saraland defender. If we could see that angle again. Mm. They're in the play. Watch here. So Holding. Watch coming in from the, the left hand side. There's the Eager. Yard penalty I guess they're the saying foul. that's enough. We'll replay. First down. That, was that the holding? I, I don't know. I, I didn't see it all the way through. We were not isolated on Eager. Takes a touchdown off the board. Mm, mm, mm. Now, you know, if you're Sarah Lynn, you're saying, well, you gave a 20 yard catch. <laughs> Easy. So first and goal now back from the 12. Murchison, middle of the field, fires, and he's able to get it complete to Schamberger for the touchdown. How about our guy, Schamberger, pregame show guest? We liked him a lot then, like his daddy a lot. He's an assistant coach, former head guy, B.C. Rain and LaFleur, and not normally an offensive player. But I'll do what it takes, and this ball, watch, not perfect. It's behind Schamberger. Look at him use those strong hands, Jim. Coverage by Gully, who's got a deflection and an interception tonight, and Schamberger, who just in recent weeks... And the PAT sneaks in in recent weeks has moved over on the offensive side of the board when they need a big play. And now McGill Tulin has cut the lead to three. And while we wait the kickoff, be able to tell you about our friends Hanson Supertex. Thanks for being a part of Friday Night Rivals and a sponsor in our Halftime show, also Andy Citroen, injury attorneys. Our scholastic athlete of the week, Alabama Orthopedic Clinic, our pregame show, and our live stream on Facebook. And Wendy's with our Wendy's Giant of the Week. Do you expect this to be a three-point game uh, closed in toward the end of the third quarter? I, I didn't expect that when we when it was 16 to three Sarah Land in the early in the second quarter, and then they were held to field goals where they should have had touchdowns. It happened again. Here yep. comes McGill, and these McGill seniors, including Alex Schamberger, are playing their last high school football game, and what a memory he's got with the touchdown reception. On that drive. Well, it was kind of a forewarning with their big win over Blunt last week. Their battle against uh, Theodore two weeks ago. Where they played him straight up in the first half. Fair catch called for at the 30. And Sarah Land's offense back out here. Got the biggest offensive play on the ground last drive from Sante McWilliams. That play, uh, drive 11, plays 73 yards. Mm. Big 46-yard run right in the middle of it. Yep. Schamberger kept him from getting in the end zone. Yep. And he gets the touchdown reception. 
And Saraland will put three receivers to the bottom of your screen. Lacey quickly to C.D. Gill. Gill turns it upfield and steps out of bounds at the 43, but that's going to be good for a USA Health first down. That was quick, and that was easy. Yep. Gill, another one of those sophomores that there's only so many balls to go around on, on offense, right? Imagine that. McWilliams, right side, puts his Ooh. head down and barrels forward. He's going to have 13 into McGill territory yeah. for the first down. Later in the game now, we're heading toward the fourth quarter. You know, you're maybe a little tired of all this. He's not. He can't wait to the uh, later stages of a game and, and begin to rack up some yards and, and take your will away. Up to the 43. Lacey looking for Williams, who's got some separation, and he just overthrew him by a yard. Oh, he got a little step on Welch. And Lacey would like to have that one back, I think. No kidding. Boy. I just don't know how you stay in front of him. You know, I... I yeah, you can't. You, you, you try to get a jam on him at the at the line, and he gets a step past you. Or you, if you give too big a cushion, he yeah. catches it in front of you. And, and, and now, beats you that way. Now you're chasing him. Yeah. McWilliams bounces off a tackle at the line of scrimmage and comes forward. A nice play on that one. Going to pick up about eight on a play that looked like there wasn't much there to start. No, it didn't look like that. McGill had a little... little a little bit of penetration. This kid really understands angles, man. He he really understands how to get the most out of every crease and block. Third and two. Lacey scrambles, airs it out, looking for Gill. He's got it inside the five. Sophomore to sophomore. But what a what a great play on the ball by C.D. Gill. Lacey scrambling. And, and a great throw, too. A great throw. Gets it inside the three. As London Hill got turned around there. and Wow. Ooh, got that right hand up. Almost yeah, made yeah, a play on it. You know, Gil had, uh, Hill had better coverage than, than, we, than mm -hmm. we thought the first time there on the replay. As you said, he had a hand there, and he was up on him. But Gill able to come up with a catch, and now... Can this McGill defense come up with another stop again? The answer is no. Not this time. Yeah, you get tired down the red zone, too, of just banging, banging, banging. And this time they get the big hole. And McWilliams and Sarah Land answers back. I think McGill was blitzing people right up the gut. And that allowed the uh, outside seam to be open. Watch right here. He just veers to the outside, and no one's there, simply. McWilliams is good when you apply contact. When you apply none, it's a touchdown. And Kirkland increases the Saraland lead to 10. And Saraland able to cash in in the red zone there, and more of our great friends on Friday Night Rivals, including USA Health and Roof Doctors. Perk Reynolds and the City Mobile and the Kindness Counts campaign. Perk Reynolds was supposed to give you three candidates for player of the game. I see about 12 out there. No. <laughs> and, of course, we will be able to narrow it down, but there's a lot of guys playing really well tonight. No kidding. Watch this here is... Lacey, again, kind of a sidearm throw, and, and Hill was in pretty good position there. He, he had was. the arm up, not only to try to deflect the ball, but also kind yeah. of in Gill's face. Yeah, yeah. And then McWilliams in for his 10th touchdown of the season. And now Eager at the 25. Better coverage this time by Sarah Landis. 
Eager will get to about the 35. Good, f good field position for McGill. Remember, early in the game, it was atrocious for yeah, them. No question. Field was so slanted. But still, a lot of time left. Fifth, ten point, oh, ten these, point game. The way these offenses are moving, it. Yeah. You, you don't want to concede anything at this point. McGill's going to. You bet they're going to stay committed to the, to the run. Yeah, a lot of time. Murchison, the uh, sophomore, so far twelve out of thirteen uh, out of twenty three, two hundred thirteen yards, three, three TDs, three TDs. Okay, there's one of our three. You would think. On first down for the Yellow Jackets. Look at his command well, of the he's offense, gonna to, too. He's going to have to really hurry, and he did not get it off. Yeah, well, he's talking about his command of the offense, but then they ran out of time. This well, line's snap. played. Delay a game. The offensive oh, team. Oh, you hate that. It's a five-yard penalty. This we'll line's played relatively well. Down. The offensive line for McGill. Yep. That was a group that uh, Coach Joseph was telling us about before the game against... Spanish Fort saying they've made a lot of progress during the year, and you can see it because this is a good defensive front. So first and 15 inside a minute to go in the third. Merchison gives it off, and Inge is going to get a couple. It's just not much... Just do what you got to do. Slow that rush down. Yep. Don't give him the impression you're you're chucking it every down because then you've got no time. And then then they, they they sense what's going on. And, and Murchison is not not the nimblest quarterback. But he has, like you said, he has that time in the pocket. Uh, He's had time. He's had time. Second and thirteen. Murchison looks right. Fires and that one had pressure coming in on him and. That one went behind his intended receiver. We'll bring up. Now you got. Now you got third and long coming up here. Third and thirteen. Something else, Jim. That his receivers are getting open. I mean, there could be the screen or it could be a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. They're giving him a chance. They're giving him a target. And let's see if Saraland dials up any pressure a little bit. Murchison rolls out, fires, looking for the sticks. And Roscoe Haywood is going to have the first down. Wow, what a play by Murchison to avoid the the pressure and converts the first down right at the stick on third and 13. Ready to go to the fourth. C.D. Gill got him down inside the three on the catch from Lacey. And then Sante McWilliams Jr. with the touchdown to put Sparty back on top by 10. One quarter to go in our season, partner. Yeah, here we go. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, Heather Healy on the sideline. First and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. Murchison looking for Haywood, and he can't get it. Big first down conversion there to Haywood to end the third quarter, and they wanted to go back to the hot hand. There to open things up here in the fourth. Talking about what a warm, gracious young man Ham uh, Schamberger was before the uh, at our, at our pregame shooting at AOC. Hayward, on the other hand, was uh, look, man, get off the field uh, before the <laughs> before the game. I was watching him do some drills, and he was looking at me like, uh, "Yeah, you're in the way." <laughs> second, second, and ten. Murchison again wants to go up top this time. He looks for Eager, and it's going to be picked off by Crenshaw. Crenshaw running stride for stride. The junior with the pick. Good coverage here, and let's see here. Yeah, good ball, just a little bit to the outside, right? And he, it's a bobble and a catch. Just, just a, if he's thrown it a little bit to the middle of the field, Jim, yep. he's got something. But he throws it to the outside over the wrong shoulder. It's a tough bend back for the oh, receiver. Oh, yeah, yeah. Crenshaw actually had position if the ball is going to be thrown that way. More to the middle of the field. And I think uh, Eager might have himself another big play. Uh, Crenshaw with the pick, and 
second interception thrown tonight by Murchison. I got some thoughts on what we might see here, Jim. McWilliams up the middle. Watch out. Sante McWilliams. Will he go to the house? 89 yards. Yes. Spartan touchdown. I think we could expect Sarah Land on the ground, Jim. That's what I was going to say. But actually, it was what I was pointing at because you've got such a good back. He's really beginning to get his stride. You want to shorten the game and win the game at the same time, and you can with McWilliams, and there you go. He's going to go over 200, I think, now. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's one. Broke a tackle at the line of scrimmage from Dylan Sauce. You don't mm -hmm. see that happen no, very often. No, but this, <laughs> this is a tough guy to get to the ground. And he just runs by and away from everyone. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Sarah Lynn would love to get, have a methodical drive there. Yeah, exactly. And that was not methodical. Two up the clock, or you can just go 89. Hey. <laughs> get six yeah. and increase your lead to the biggest of the night. 89 yards. 226 on the night for McWilliams. And Sarah Lynn on top by 17. Just underway here in the third. There goes my hero blaring by the Foo Fighters and some Saraland heroes here tonight on senior night, but a lot of them are sophomores. Yep, they really are. I mean, the seniors. Jeff Kelly, how about that? Telling us this is his favorite game of the year, senior night. You got, you never know about this guy. Yeah, he does not. Get off my porch one night. Does not like homecoming. He's not a fan of that, but senior night, he, he and he likes it because it, he said, our, our band members, our dance team, uh, uh, any of our fall athletes, our, our lone swimmer that was a senior got recognized. And he's like, it's to honor the seniors, their parents, all the, everything they've put in. It's a, yeah. it's a big deal to... Mr. Usual Grouchy Pants on Friday. <laughs> Eager to the five. Now Eager still on his feet. Gets slung down up to the 38, but a nice return for McGill. His uh, team was making him a little grouchy in the first half, settling for field goals when they were in the red zone. I think four times in all this game. And now the turnover. Now you... you down 17, so you're, you're going to feel a little more pressed to keep it, keep putting it in the air, right? You would think uh, it's it, it been interesting the way they've, they've given inches carries 21 for 47 yards. They've been committed to the run. Congratulations to UMS, right? Another perfect season as they beat Williamson 17 to 8, and Terry Curtis now tied for the most wins ever. Wow. In so Alabama High School, tied with. You know what I was going to say about what I thought we could see and still could. McWilliams on the ground when Sherilyn's got the ball. And just quick stuff. Yeah. To, uh, to uh, Williams, let him make a big play on a screen or on, on a quick uh, a quick out at the line of scrimmage, you know. Wanna, outside I'll screen. Also want to congratulate the Theodore Bobcats on a perfect season, ranked number one in 6A. It's not much there on second down for McGill. Theodore beats St. Paul's tonight 16-3. So Eric Collier, 10-0. What a season for the number one ranked Bobcats. Fairhope, a nice win tonight or Bessemer. 44-22. Tough place to go on the road at Birmingham. Get that win. Daphne beat Hillcrest Evergreen 34-14. Murchison comes to the near side. Going to be a first down into McGill territory. Tristan Brower, the senior, with his first catch tonight. Hey, Jim. Good throw. Yeah. On the move. Yeah. As you said, he's a big... He's a big I think he's, he's more agile than... 
I think you at maybe first blush then when you, you mm -hmm. look at him. I think yeah. he's got better mobility than yep. maybe Pro you think. Probably so. You're not going to ask him to do too much, but he's able to, you know, roll out of the pocket, make a throw on the run. He can do a lot of things for Yeah, even just moving the pocket a little bit uh -huh. really help. 15 years old, way ahead of the game. But low snap. The yep. snap's been low. Up top wants to take another shot. So he tried to go right back to Eager. Eager, the senior, playing his last game here. Middle of the field. Yep. You know, just lead him a little bit more toward the, toward the post. That's a post route. Throw yep. it to the post. Give your guy a chance to run to the ball. Yep. Not have to try to work back through the defender. He, that, still a nice ball. And he, Eager going to south, you said, right? Yep. And he will obviously be a speed guy on the outside for them. That uh, speedy receiver from McGill to South thing has worked out well in the past. <laughs> right to the Cowboys. <laughs> Fired up and broken up as that time Isaiah Bowie, the sophomore, his fourth pass breakup of the year, third and long coming up. Bowie, 6'2", 195. Like you said a sophomore linebacker way downfield in coverage. Yep. Approaching three minutes gone by in the fourth. Murchison, pressure coming, wants to set up the screen. That went too high for Haywood. Yeah, the pressure affected the throw for sure. Haywood had room to go. He, yep. That was at least, that was the first hand at the very least if he catches the ball. Yeah, and he let those linemen come in, but it, if you can't get it away quickly enough, right. you're still backpedaling, and then your foot mechanics get a little wonky and incomplete. Now fourth and ten. Yeah, that 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 might have been a, a house call. Yeah. He got it to his belly. All right, Brower up to the slot. Haywood at the bottom of the screen. Eager up top. Murchison wants to go right back to Eager. Just a yard. Too far. Mm. And a turnover on downs. As now we're inside nine minutes to go. Now you, your Sarah Line, you'd love one of those five or six minute drives here, chew up a bunch of clock. I give credit to McGill. They've extended this team. Oh. They pushed them. I know it's, you're looking uh, at it 41 24, but uh, believe us, until McWilliams' big run last time they had it, this thing has been very contested. Yeah, no, uh, no stars getting a quick hook in this one to rest for Watumka. Nope. McWilliams, guess who? Dylan Sauce. Another young man playing his last high school football game. He plays every game like it's his last. How about Coach Norman Joseph saying, uh, I'd love to have as many Dylan Sauce mom parents as I, as, as I, I take everyone if they were all like his mom. He it, just could not sing the praises of that young man's mom. Yep, she pushed him, and, yeah. and he responded, and she's also been, you know, the, as a parent of, a, of an athlete, you play a role too. Yep. Lacey on the right side, and he'll step out of bounds there. Good job by McGill to not only keep Lacey from maybe taking off, but also the good coverage downfield. What I mean by that, Jim, about being a parent playing a role, you have a role too. And the role is to not be negative. The role is to be supportive. The role is to stay out of the coach's way and the coaching staff's way where they're trying to do their job. Your child is in their world. Let him grow up. Yep. Support your your child and also the coach, right? Yeah. Support your coach. Yeah, absolutely. And Sarah Lynn takes the play clock, play clock all the way down to zero. Lacey, a shot to the middle of the field. going to be very close. He's a little short. Jordan Dees, the look at the spot. Oh. Uh, far side spot looks like. Gonna 
Give him the first down. Yeah, right there at the sticks. Good, good hit. Good, good hit on the play. Yeah, good awareness by Dees to get right to the stick. Lacey steps into this one and fires that one off. And London Hill wraps him up immediately, but not before he picks up the Roof Doctor's first down. Keep talking about Williams. Don't think Lacey isn't going to be somebody that everyone is after by the time he's a senior. McWilliams, Dylan Sauce. <laughs> with another tackle for loss. Man, I missed my opportunity to shake that kid's hand before the game, but that'd be my pleasure. Jeff Kelly, when he saw Coach Joseph at the taping of our pregame show on Wednesday night, he said, who is this number 20 I'm seeing on your, on your team? On your defensive front. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of the same thing every other coach is <laughs> seeing. They watch him all over. Inside seven now. Lacey, middle of the field. It's dropped. Oh, he had Jordan Dees, the junior, who had six. He certainly did have six. Another slant. And uh, kind of a deep slant, kind of a post. But he, he uh, just a hair behind him, I guess, Jim. Yeah, I think we're seeing. I think we, maybe we've seen the last of Brian Williams. Yeah, I think it's. So. I was trying to look on the. See if no, he's out here on the bottom of your screen. I okay. thought maybe they have, might have spelled him, but he's got a, he's got a big cushion. A handoff, McWilliams breaks one tackle, but he's up to the forty-five. Going to bring up fourth down is. This one will be under six minutes to go. Be, see, if, see if Sarah Land's going to punt this one. Looks like they're going to go for it right now on fourth and seven. This will keep everybody out here. Maybe they go a hard count. Maybe just run the clock down. See, there was the hard count. Now. Lacey inside 10. They snap it. Give it off to McWilliams on the left side. And McWilliams has got the first down and delivers a blow at the end of the run to the 25. Yeah, McWilliams just shot right through the hole. Provided by Crenshaw. Ethan Green on that left side. And boy, you know, the, the people tackling him are getting tired. And he's getting stronger. And that's why that's uh, 245 yards. Wow. And not, a, not I mean, 22 carries. It's, it's a big, big night in carries and also in yardage. But he had to grind for a lot of them in the first half. He did. Zipped to Williams. In case you're wondering if he's still in the game, that would be yes. And he gets thrown out of bounds on that one. That will stop the clock, and now they'll start it back up. Both these quarterbacks for sophomores really have got a really good grasp of what they're doing out there. I mean, they're they're, they're a lot is asked of them. Oh, so much is asked of them, and and they are really good players and really good leaders, and they certainly at, at that age. You kind of have to lead by doing things rather than by being a vocal guy. And that'll come. McWilliams. Down inside the 10. And now flags at the end of this one. Up at the top of the screen. Some wide receiver blocking downfield. Is that what's going on there? Yeah, probably some... Obviously, some maybe some frustration on the defensive side. Ooh, did I just see a thumb like that was going to be an ejection? Mm, it mm -hmm. looks like it because I saw it again. He's going to go over and have a word with Coach Joseph.
All right. Well, Tim Porter is going to come over and have the same conversation with Jeff Kelly. So Tim Porter, tell us what After happened. After the play, there were two penalties. A dead ball, unsportsman on the red team, dead ball, unsportsman on the white team. Penalty will be offsetting. It's going to be second down. Right. So no ejection. That's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Just some pushing and shoving at the end of the play and now the officials trying to I'm not sure what they're trying to sort out here now is Coach Joseph coming out a bit now. Tim Porter. It was a, death. a first down had been achieved on the play prior to it. It will be a first down, Sarah Land. All right, so it is a first down for Sarah Land. It's a roof doctor's first down, and this one will be near four minutes when we snap got about 10 seconds on the play clock in place he's aware of that I think he is uh, Lacey Kingston Bush it's his 13th carry of the season as we start to see some Maybe some substitutions on the Sarah Land side. You wish the big back play some linebacker as well. Sarah Land is going to let this one go all the way down to three minutes. I just want this clock to keep, keep yeah, running, get I, nobody injured. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Kelly would rather his team was closer to midfield where they could just kind of, you know, if you don't know the backstory. Coach Joseph actually recruited Kelly out of high school for Southern Bush. Miss. In for the touchdown. Bush. And Kingston Bush, you know what year he is here at Sarah Land, Dan Brennan? Sophomore. Yeah, he's a sophomore. Aren't they all sophomores? That offensive line's got some grown men, I'll tell you that. And Sarah Land pulling away in this one, and Kirkland will try to stay perfect on the night. And he does. And Sarah Land out. Doubled up McGill. 48 24, three minutes to go. Kingston Bush. His second touchdown of the season builds on the Sarah Land lead. Norman Joseph, coach of McGill, two and over. They're going to finish their year five and five, but as we said, a young, young team all year and Second year here, I, 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 you really get the sense that he he likes the direction that things are moving there at yeah. McGill. I mean, he told us as much, and uh, I, I think he's really proud of the growth of this team. You're looking at the score, uh, you know, it's not a, 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 an accurate description of what we saw here tonight. We saw a team fall behind 16 to three, and then take the lead. Yeah, scored. And we saw a team fall behind by 10 and get back within three. Uh, against one of the best teams in the state. Let's yep. be clear about who and what Sarah Land is. And now we'll see. Lots of fresh jerseys out there on defense for Sarah Land with three minutes. 
to go in this one. And Sarah Lane going to finish the year nine and one. They'll host Wetumpka. Wetumpka, Wetumpka. Wetumpka. <laughs> it's kind of a fun where you put the inflection, I guess, right? Wetumpka. Yeah, it's almost like a. It's almost like a. W U H in the Wetumpka. Got it. I said it right the first time. Yeah, it's not, not it's not W E E. If you're we're now we're doing phonetic phonetic pronunciations on TV, yeah, which we're, is we're viewers now, are loving. Right, we're on PBS suddenly. Yeah. Uh, Can we move past we, that? We, we did a uh, we did a Wetumpka playoff game against McGill. We did a few years back. We did. Murchison fires this one. Good break on the ball. Coming over there, Artist Moffitt, sophomore, will get credit for his sixth breakup of the year. And coming up is our Dr. Pepper, one of a kind player of the game. No shortage of choices there as well. <laughs> I would say not. 48 24. Janice MacArthur also in the running. Banana pudding. She also. Just trying to sneak in the top three. <laughs> if I get a vote. Third down here for the Yellow Jackets. Complete nice work by Murchison. Able to keep this drive alive. As just right back to Eager. And that, that young man's not coming off the field in his last game as a senior no. at McGill. No. For a yellow first he didn't run a fly pattern here. Try to make a big play before everybody's got to go home. Murchison's been known to go that way tonight. Murchison's got an arm. Yep. And now you might have some substitutions there as well as Tim Talbot, senior for McGill, gets his first touch tonight. And he's into Sarah Land. Hey, our great crew giving you all these great shots. Banya Kai down there on the sideline. Joe Garrett, our grip, who keeps people from tripping over Banya's Cord there. I'll try not to get too technical. And you've avoided it. Kira Dito in our high end zone cam tonight. What's up, Kira? They do such a great job to give us these great, great shots and give you at home these great shots each and every each and every week. Our we're proud to work with these, with this crew each each week. Dan Brennan. Yes, they work really hard. Product to, is uh, is evident. You can see by what you're seeing on screen. More of our longtime members of the crew. Raymond Wilson and Victoria Crowder. Like they're really they're really behind there. There's there Victoria. she is. I Victoria, say. take a little lean out. We can just see your hand. Take a little lean out. I'm not sure Ray needed to give us the queen wave, but <laughs> eager, knocked out of bounds. Victoria would be the one you want to get on camera, to be honest with you. Yeah. If you get a look at the two, there's, there, uh, 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 maybe. They're trying. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Oh, goodness. Really, really, you know. They're, they're good people. They're good friends. They're good at what they do and give you the great views at home to watch it. Yeah. First down at the 23 here. For McGill. Murchison looking Schamberger. And that senior has got another first down inside the 10. And there's all the great people. Daniel Hicks down in the kind of in the middle in the uh, right hand side, known as our red hat. He is the guy who stops play. Mm -hmm. Officials want the play to get going. He's like, now nah, we're gonna hold this off. He will not. He will not let a play get started so you don't miss seeing one on TV. That's where that happens. Christian Hinkle right over here to our right. Our statistician took over for Matt Melton. Great midseason acquisitions. That one tipped in the air and caught. By Eager for the touchdown. <laughs> How about that? Eager with another touchdown here tonight. It'll be his second 
of the evening. And he'll go out over 200 yards receiving, I think, tonight. Take a look right now. Eager, 12 catches, 204, two touchdowns. Yeah, put him in the Hurt Reynolds. Just go ahead. We don't want to spoil Gosh, it. Gosh. Put, put him wow. in there, right? So, yeah, so Eager. Yeah. And how about McWilliams? Out tip and eager with the touchdown. So I was just saying, it's really rarely good for an offensive team when the ball gets tipped in the middle of the field, right? Except for there when it's a touchdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, more yeah. of a great uh, folks back at uh, back at the station, back at Master Control, the general manager Corey Culleton and really making this go uh, all behind the scenes work that gets taken care of uh, from all of our great crew back at the at the station to bring you Friday night rivals each and every week you know when you look at the team that puts this together oh. it's massive so so great and really appreciate everything they do all season Jared Kihas has not come up in the booth. Banana pudding in the booth. <laughs> Kihas shows up. He is. Week 11. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> Jeff Kelly, a little bit of a smile there as his team can nine and nine and one. What a what a everything they're building up here in Spanish Fort yep. uh, in Saraland from the facilities, the new track they just unveiled this school is expanding. This week. Yeah. If they, if they need it, or they anticipate they're going to need it, they figure out how to get it. And, and uh, that senior night, all those seniors recognized, and I'd say 95% are on the college. And that would be, be caught in, I think, just a need to close this one out. And couldn't do it with all of our great supporters. Dr. Pepper Sonic, the United States Coast Guard, Greer's, Barrow Fine Furniture, Hanson Supertex, Andy Citroen Injury Attorneys, Alabama Orthopedic Clinic, Clinic. It's really not the one I thought I was going to blow in that sentence. <laughs> USA oh, Health. You had your doubts about one of them, huh? <laughs> Roof Doctors, City Mobile, and Hurt Reynolds. And our Dr. Pepper player of the game is Sante McWilliams. As Dan said, 23 carries, 253 yards. Two touchdowns. Big second half, too. Yeah. Our one of a kind player of the game. And There's a lot of players that played well tonight. And that should do it. And it will. Sarah Land will finish nine and one. McGill finishes five and five. They'll wrap up their season. Sarah Land at home here next week. In the playoffs. Hey, I also want to thank Vince Early. He was our director. Worked with him all year long. Really great working with him. Got our officials who have told us they were getting, they're going to blow right by us here and get out of the press box and get on to their big post game celebrations. And they did just that, didn't they? I, I, don't, know, I don't know where they're going. I have no idea, and I'm not following them. It's such a. Such respect between those two. We're back to wrap it up tonight and for the season from Saraland. Back to this. There you see our final score here on Friday Night Rivals. Saraland with a big win here at home tonight, 48 31. Let's hear about it with the head coach of the Victorious Spartans, Jeff Kelly and Heather Healy. Coach, transitioning into the fourth quarter, you told your sideline to dial it up. Shortly after they get an interception, shortly after that they get a score. Is that dialed up enough for you to put the game away? Hey, we're just happy to get the win, you know. A lot of credit to McGill. They came out and played a heck of a game. Coach Joseph and his staff did a good job. You know, we, we uh, you know, come out here and, and put up some points and, you know, had some mistakes on both sides of the ball. We'll get corrected for next week. And so, but, uh, you know, wins are hard to come by in this region. We got good teams week in and week out, uh, so we'll take it. We're happy to get the W. You end the regular season on a positive note, Coach. How does this momentum transition into playoff week? You know, hopefully it does. You know, the thing that you got to do a really good job of is when you get to the 
playoffs, everybody's zero and zero. So the nine and one is nice, but it really doesn't matter. Everybody's zero and zero. You just want to go try to get a win. One game seasons from here on out. This is one of your favorite nights of the year, senior night. How proud are you of these 14 seniors that played their hearts out? Really proud. You know, they, so our seniors, they had some great games. I, I can name several of them right here that did a great job tonight. They just uh, outstanding examples for our young guys and uh, have brought a ton to our school and our program over the last few years. And we have a representative from Dr. Pepper to give you the game-winning trophy. On behalf of Coca-Cola and Dr. Pepper, congratulations on the win. Thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate what you guys do. It's nice to get one of these. Appreciate it. Guys. Thank you all. All right. Thanks, uh, Heather. Thanks, Jeff Kelly. And give you our Herc Reynolds players of the game. You can go to utb44.com tonight to vote on these players. Ryan Williams, Santay McWilliams of the victorious Saraland Spartans or Andrew Murchison of McGill Tulin. So our final score here tonight, 48-31. Dan Brennan, another year of the books. Brother. Yeah, a lot, a lot of fun, Jim. 23 years, love it. You got it. Love it. Thank you to our entire crew. Thanks to Heather on the sideline. Vince Early, our director. Christian Hankel, our statistician. Dan Brennan, I'm Jim Cox saying good night from Sarah Land, and it wraps up another season of Friday Night Rivals here on UTV 44.